Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to Chicago, where the fire serve cold, but the wolves and the hawks never shiver in the snow. The bulls keep it running, the socks run the south, the cubs run the north, but the bears run the house. Two Chicago sports fans got their ears to the street. Any team make a move, and they never skip a beat. And in this house, this is where we be. Welcome to the show, Big Z. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Chicago. Coming from the 606 Media Studios, this is the TCSF Podcast with Big Z. This week, we have a full house, full deck. We have Stevie B in the house. Yo, yo, yo. What up, what up from the No Water in the Weekend Podcast. So after you've done listening to this, go and check out their new episode. And we also have Ivan Vargas from the Tape Never Lies Network. What's up, man? What's going on, guys? How's oh, it going? Man. Welcome. I know. Glad to be here. Welcome to the 606 Media Studio headquarters. Shut apparently. up. This is not the headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> Studio number two. Oh, God. <laughs> well, glad to have you both on the show. It's going to be a lot of fun for our listeners. Get ready for a wild ride. We are going to get into it. This is episode 153. It is brought to you by 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Grit Clothing Company. Don't forget to go to gritclothingco.com and get your official TCSF podcast t-shirt. Search for keyword True Chicago and use our promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15% off your entire order. That is TRUEFAN15. Go and get your official TCSF shirts now. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. And if it's your first time or your longtime listener, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Smash. That's right. And notify button. And go ahead and give us a, a review. Please give us five stars. That's the only one we can get. Five stars. Five stars. We got we to shoot up the charts. Uh, on your listening app of choice, you can find us on Facebook at True Chicago Fans. You can find us on IG at True Chicago Sports Fans, at 606 Media Group, at Big Z, six, uh, Big Z underscore 606 Media Group. What's your social? Uh, it's no water on the weekend, but weekend is spelled W K N D, mm -hmm. and then straight function uh, is my regular one. Just having outfits looking straightforward and always functional. But there we I go. don't really do fashion anymore, so Aww. plus the time we live in, straight function, it sounds kind of canceling now. So I might <laughs> have to change that. I mean, what's your socials, man? So they can find you. Yeah, it's at TTNL or at Ivan V underscore TTNL on was it Twitter or X now? What is, what's going on I with that? I think it's still Twitter. It's still, it's still Twitter I looked, for up, now, I looked at my right? app, and it's still Twitter. There is an, a Simpsons episode that shows um, it's a, it's an iPhone, and at the bottom it has the exact same logo. Okay, I got to watch it. I, um, I'll bring it up I'm, to you. I'm, I'm going to have to look that up. I don't believe in those conspiracy theories. And during the break, I'll show you. I, I'm going to have to look it up. But again, and that's, my, that's my Twitter or X or whatever it's going by now. And then <laughs> I, I have Instagram and everything else, but I forgot all those little handles. So <laughs> you guys can go look at look me up. Just type in Ivan Vargas. You'll see me. I got an orange shirt and a, and a backwards hat yep, usually that, all the time. So. Yeah, you showed it to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, yeah yesterday. All right, don't forget, you can support the show with a monthly subscription at anchor.fm slash true Chicago sports fans. Go on over there and click on support, and you can subscribe as low as 99 cents a month. What I'm going to try to do is find things that are 99 cents. You can't find anything that's 99 cents anymore. Mm -mm. I could give you 99 cents. I would definitely take 99 cents. <laughs> give me all your pennies, bro. Give me all those pennies. Do you like the show? I sure do. Are you a fan? Hell yeah. Well, tell your friends, and we'll tell, and they'll tell their friends, and we'll all be best friends. If you enjoy the content, if we make you laugh or cry or yell or think of anything important, please share with others so uh, we could share it and I'll, you know, I'll be friends too. That's right. That's so, right, man. Uh, what up, Z? How is your week? Jam-packed. Jam-packed. Uh, it's been packed. It's just doing a lot it's of shit. It's been busy. Yeah, well, applying for jobs. That takes a long time. Well, yeah. So if you apply to 20, you're going to hear back from six. If that. That's a if study. That, it's, right. so, it's so Depending bad. on what the job is. Yeah, well, teaching jobs are very scarce right now. So, um, Really? Yeah. yeah. I was a little yeah. sarcastic. I know. I figured. I uh, well, last Tuesday, and I talked about it on your show on Friday. Yes, you did. Yeah. I almost bowled a perfect game. That's true. That's amazing. Nine strikes in a row. Yeah. I'm impressed. Thank you. Thank you. I'm impressed myself because the week before I bowled the 66. <laughs> <laughs> and that's called a comeback. <laughs> so I bowled the 269, and now I, was, I missed. Uh, it was a bad break. I had two pins, and then I missed the second throw. So I was like, I, I didn't give a fuck at that point. Um, the pressure I, got to him. The right, pressure right, right. Did, Well, everybody stopped bowling. 
Well, I mean, everybody's watching you. Yeah, I would, I would uh, especially for some a feat. In look, I'm not a bowler, but I understand what a 300 game, yeah. like bowling 300 game that's means. Like, that's like, like you know, it, perfect exactly. game. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. something or you no stop hitter. and yeah, you no watch. Hitter, yeah, yeah. You stop and you watch that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I, I get it. There's a lot of pressure coming. But it always fucks up the person that's bowling because you're so used to the noise. You're so used to the ambience. You're like, okay, I'm just zoned in. You still have your peripherals. But there was no one bowling, no sounds. Yeah, but you like WWE, so you know the you want the crowd cheering for you, and they probably were. They weren't. It was dead silent. You can oh, drop. Well, a you should have made it like an entertainment, like right. raise your hands got up, happy like go yeah. 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 Well, next time I'm in that situation, I will turn around. I'll reset. I'm like, no, I need some fucking noise. Come on, come up with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, strike I, my ego. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I missed. Uh, so I missed the 600 series by two pins, uh, which is a really good series if you're if you're not a bowling fan. But uh. Yeah, yeah, definitely crumbled under the pressure. And the thing is that everybody was just talking to me like nothing. They were they were not talking bowling to me. They were just talking like sports and other shit just to keep my mind off it. And I didn't even notice they were doing it. I was just there just right. hanging out. Right. And, you know, at some point I noticed I had like four or five in a row. And you then I was, a hand bone. Right. Sure. I, at, that, at that point, I'm okay. I'm, I'm in a zone. But I didn't think I would ever get to nine strikes in a row. I wouldn't think you'd get nine strikes in a row either. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even imagine. Like I said, I, t- I told you before, I'm yeah. a terrible bowler. So it's like, you might as well put up the guards for me. So like, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm trying to live through vicariously through you awesome. right now. Like, awesome. I'm, I'm loving yeah. it. I'm loving it. <laughs> no, it was, it was a really good time. I got a bunch of hugs and high fives and stuff like that. You know, even though I, I, I fucked up at what the end. What about any but, kisses on the uh, cheek? No, no. No? No, no, no we're not. No Italians on my team. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, also, this past Thursday, I was over at Mitchell's Tap for the White Sox pregame with Chuck Garfine and Ozzy Gein, So That was cute. That was cute. I was on TV. <laughs> I got to ask uh, Chuck a question. I asked him, why is he so salty? And um, <laughs> he cracked up. And then, you know, in the middle of the show, he turned around and started addressing me. And so did Ozzy, which is really, you really felt cool. like his best friend, didn't you? Well, Chuck's been on the show. Chuck's been on the show, and he remembered that he's been on the show. Um, Ozzy, Ozzy was supposed to be on my show. But that was the morning of Tony Larusa getting hired. Mm. So then his son is like, he's not doing any press. Sorry, bro. And I was like, well, fuck it. You come on then. You talk shit all the time. You can't shut up sometimes. Let's go. Let's go, Junior. And yeah, he gave me like two hours worth of content. So does he talk as fast as his father? Oh, oh yeah. He could keep up. He he can, he's very quick witted. He's very knowledgeable. Um, I've never it's, seen his. Son. It's sometimes sometimes it's hard to corral him. Because he can't go into a, a tangent and just go on a spaceship and just you'll. I'll, and just I'll say I'll say it's a it's great baseball knowledge. Yes, like he, he does go off on a tangent, but yes. it's you want to listen, but sometimes you have to be like, all right, time out, Oz. Like yes. especially if you're running a podcast, you're like, <laughs> yeah. time out, Oz. We got to get a break. Yeah, yeah, I think that episode was three hours. I had to split it into yeah. the interview into two halves because it was a lot. Now, when he calls his dad to say, "Hey, my papi," or what, what does he say? I don't even remember. It's probably <laughs> papi. Probably. I mean, I would imagine. Oh, oh. We'll ask him later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I just want to say, yeah. uh, you had the biggest smile. We talked about this on yeah. on the weekend, and yeah. I was so proud of you. But, uh, yeah, you were like a little boy in a candy And store. I plugged the show on TV. I know. That and I got really, away with it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. That that's was, reporting right there. That's, yeah, that's yeah. grade A reporting that's right, right there. That's right. That's uh, right. So it was a fun time. Uh, he signed a uh, bobblehead for me and uh, my jersey. Of my course you're going to bring a stuff with you. Did you carry a backpack with all the stuff that you were going to have him sign? Yeah. I, I usually, like, you would never seen me at White Sox Fest. I literally have. They don't have White Sox Fest. They anymore. didn't have it last year. <laughs> but when they do, I literally have a, uh, a mailman bag, a book bag. A satchel. And, no, it's a mailman bag. That's what a, it is. A, a satchel, satchel smaller. A satchel's Indiana Jones bag. Right, it's small. A mailman bag is the big one. Oh, I would have just brought it back there. But anyway, get out. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I have both those bags, <laughs> and then I bring my cooler with a handle of Jack Daniels and a, and a 12-pack of beer in it. You could drink in the pavilion? Uh, this is when they used to have it at the Palmer Hotel. Oh, I, I didn't know that. That's yeah, so cool. Cubs, is, Cubs is at the Marriott, I believe, right on Michigan Avenue. I yeah. think it's the Marriott. Um, so that's where I learned it because one of my fr- my cousins, she's like, hey, I can't go on Sunday. Do you want to go to Cubs Fest? And I was like, um... Is Ryan Sandberg going to be there? She's like, yeah, yeah, he is. I'm like, yeah, I'll go. Yeah, as a White Sox fan who grew up watching Ryan Sandberg as my yes. favorite player, mm-hmm. of course I'm going to go. And then I'm lo- watching and looking at people watching like, oh, shit, everybody's got a cooler and excuse me, just walking around with beer and shit. I'm like, great idea. So then I signed up for Sockfest. I'm like, I'm doing this. And no one was doing that. 
And everyone, were you selling beers? No. I want to start selling people beers. Dude, it's a three-day weekend. Inside, selling yeah. beers. And, and, and it was three guys. So, like, we all just, like, literally 6 a.m. in line chugging. <laughs> Jeez. We were drinking. We slept for, like, two hours. And then, yeah, we part. I didn't tell you this, but we partied with Alexi Ramirez. He likes Black Label. And I, we bought a bottle of Black Label, got his ass super drunk. His his signing was at 8 o'clock in the morning. He didn't get to until 8.42. And I was first in line. <laughs> See, he's walking up to the stage. I'm like, what's up, Black Label? He's got the glasses on. He's shaking his head. I'm like, oh, no, you wanted a party last night. This is how we party, bro. I'm really shocked that you were still up. This is, what, eight, ten years ago? So, yeah. Oh, you had the energy. Energy, yeah. yeah. That was your age. Yeah, you were. So, yeah, tons of energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, before we transition to you guys, uh, yesterday was the 50th anniversary of Tecate Clan restaurant, Mexican restaurant that um, originated on Chicago Avenue. I've been going there since I was a baby, um, and they had their 50-year anniversary, and we went over there. Yes, we did. Me and Steve went over there, and uh, we had some tacos and some margaritas and some beers. Yeah. And it was mariachi. It was a good time. They didn't play uh, no, you Poco wanted, Loco. Well, you didn't request it. I was scared to ask. Why? You have a mouth. You're I on do. a fucking podcast, bro. I, yes, I do. But the cartel that was at the corner over there in the, in the thing, <laughs> <laughs> like, look at this guy. They, asking for Poco Loco from... Uh, they probably would have sang with you, bro. I don't know. Uh, you know those guys are softies in the heart. To their moms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Stephen, how was your week? And then we'll go talk to Ivan because, you know, he's a guest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so pretty much we did that on Sunday. Friday we did the show. Uh, Saturday I woke up tired as hell uh, because I was up till I don't know, 3, 4 o'clock, something like that. Too much porn? A lot of porn. All over the spectrum between uh, getting my nuts squished by a uh, heel <laughs> to uh, you have um, two, a mom and daughter. I don't know. It was all over the place, all over the spectrum. Uh, <laughs> some Fortnite, too. And then um, a TV show that I'm going to explain what I was watching yesterday. Oh, we'll get to that later. We'll get that later. Yeah. Um, but other than that, that's been pretty much it. Yeah. I didn't get to go see, I had a chance to go see Oppenheimer today. You did? Uh, but I had so much to do today, and I, it just didn't happen. So it's just gotcha. fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ivan, uh, how was your week? Uh, it was actually pretty good, man. I, I'm exhausted right now yeah. just because the weekend kicked my ass. Like a lot of softball. I play softball on the weekends. Yeah, I'm retired. So, so yeah. So, well, you, then, you, then you understand. Oh, I know exactly. So yeah. like it was just battling the sun, playing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had fun, but I'm that hurting. That sun drains you. I'm hurting right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, other than that, I, mean, I went to the Cubs game, got my first foul ball. Mm-hmm. Nice. So I was happy about that. It was a... Uh, Pretty exciting. I mean, I, I I was just like you, you know. As soon as you got on NBC Sports, like I was a kid in the candy store. I was hands up, <laughs> pumping. I was talking to my brother. Some guy actually, there was a nice dude that he he actually got it on video. He came down and we air dropped it to us. So I was Perfect. like, I, pre- I was appreciative of that. So, you know, it was it was pretty good. It was an exciting time. But other than that, man, just trying to deal with the kids, cleaning up mess after mess after mess. How many mess. kids you got? Yeah, how many two, kids? Two. Two Boy tornadoes. So. Boy and a girl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, then you're done. Girl and a boy. So, I, I mean, her either first, way. then him. So, I'm done. Either yes. way. Either way, it's, it's, either way, it's over. No, no, no. Yeah, snip too, too many just, now. I'll just... You stand next to the x-ray for if 30 it ha- minutes. If it, if it happens. You stand by the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say I'm done, but if it... Whatever. Okay. All right, all right. All right. Yeah, more power to Mo- you. Most people just say, you know, I want a boy and a girl and I'm done. But if you want to, you know, be like uh, Matthew... Is it Matthew Stafford with the 19 kids? No, oh, no that's, that's, uh, that's uh, Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers, yeah. He's, he's, Philip he's Rivers, not. Antonio Cromartie. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Kemp. <laughs> I mean, if you... I, you know what? I, they might be part Hispanic because of that's how many true. kids they have. So that's true. You never know. Like, how do you take your kids to something? Like, oh, <laughs> bring in a... a what Four is nannies, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and you got to bring in, like, one of those uh, traveling buses for the for the teams, the team bus. That's what you got to get. And then all the snacks you got to get. Oh, that, why do you think he hasn't retired? <laughs> snacks are just... Uh, it, it's it. You, what was that? What was that? Uh, I think that was uh, Ethan. Who's Ethan? Ethan Hawk. Ethan Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry about that. I had to step away. But in this episode, we will catch up with our Chicago teams and we'll talk cross town this week. Yes, probably the only one of the most heated rivals in baseball. We will talk about our top five cross town memories, Bulls rumors concerning Bears news, and much more <laughs> with Sir in the Pot and what you're looking at. But first, the big three with Big Z.
<laughs> That's a tongue twister. Oh, yeah. I can't read. I okay. see that. I'm going to have to do these things, too. No, I could do it. All I right. promise. All I'll right. get better. Right. I'm Big Z, and you fuckers are not. <laughs> I'm definitely not. I would have aced it if I was you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> For today's story, we start with story number one. Y'all seen the movie Final Destination, right? I have. Y'all seen that movie, that scene with the, uh, they're driving, and there's a fucking uh, tractor trailer with a bunch of logs? Yeah, of course. Logs or pipes? Logs. Is it logs, right? Oh. I, I believe it was, it was logs. logs. Yeah, it was yeah. logs. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it actually actually did happen. I mean, the, the eighth Final Destination might have had the pipes, but... Yeah, yeah, that was just the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was like there was like five or six more, I think. Oh, but God. The first it's one I like think was a log. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Tons of ways for you to die. A fatal car crash with a log truck. Lumber falls on the car, so it actually came to fruition. Yeah, that's scary. A woman in Florida suffered a horrific death after a car collided with a log, tr- uh, log truck, causing the contents to tumble onto her vehicle. A terrifying ordeal that's easily familiar to Final Destination. 25-year-old woman was driving her SUV on SR20 uh, around 12.45 a.m. and the incident went down. According to Florida Highway Patrol, she was in the outside lane behind the semi-truck that was hauling logs but allegedly wasn't keeping a safe distance. So I'm guessing she tapped the truck and something happened. Yeah. I don't I don't understand why you would be that close to no, a semi. No. Like I, any, any, any semi. I, yeah, no, I'm on the other lane. Go ahead. Give them yeah, other either the other lane or you give them the distance. 100%. Like I don't I, you I can't don't play with that. With that no, but no, no. Some people do, man. Some people think Plus that they're 25. the best drivers. Well, 25, right. She's probably not thinking. Yeah, it looks like her she hit the truck and caused the lumber to fall onto her car. Um she was rushed to a nearby hospital, she was pronounced dead, so Oh, yeah, she, she died immediately. I mean, those dog, those logs are fucking like hundreds and po- hundreds of pounds easily. Yeah, that is true. In Fortnite, you could shoot the log down and it'll roll. Oh on you my god, you and your damn <laughs> Fortnite! <laughs> oh, if only she could have just shot the log. Down. Right, oh, yeah. <laughs> or jumped out of the car. Whatever or... blaster she had in her arsenal, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right, story number two, and I know you've guys seen the movie Beetlejuice, right? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Well, obviously, it's. I'm a, not I thought, she, I thought she got voted out. Oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, the movie Beetlejuice is in production. Obviously, it stopped because of the writer strike. Actor uh, strike, too. Yeah, actor strike as well. Uh, but it looks like a, the set that's in, I think it's in Connecticut, there are, people are going to the set and stealing stuff from the set. So they stole this thing. I know you guys can see it here. Um, it looks It's like a piece of art that looks like it's grabbing. It, it was in the first movie. Um, so they stole this. It's a 150 pound uh, sculpture. Um, Two it, people could carry it. One it, of looks, those. it looks like a bunch of finger. Like it, I yeah. think you know people that are fans of the original movie would understand. It's like yeah. it's a bunch of fingers. Like it looks like it's gonna grab you. Right. I think yeah. that there's a yeah. There's a clip of it of grabbing whoever the actress is. I can't forget forget her name. Um, but Gina yeah. Davis. Is that Gina? Yeah, that's Gina Davis. Like, you know, if you watch it back, you can't. You are astonished at how many good actors are in that movie. Yeah, I saw it again recently. Did you? Uh, in Halloween. Oh, okay. That's, that's recent. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, people are stealing stuff from sets. They I mean, stole a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of stuff from inside the house and outside. I mean, if it was a Marvel thing, I'd, I'd steal it for sure. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just got to be the right prop for Steven. <laughs> you know, yeah. I know it would be. It would be Captain I'd, America's shield. <laughs> well, no, I mean, well, yeah, I probably, that would be the first thing I'd look. But it like, depends on Thanos, what give me the glove. Yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> but the first thing, I'd go into wardrobe. That's where I'm going first. Okay. If it's a you know female cast. No, just kidding. I'm I kidding. Mean, uh, wh- whatever floats your boat, Steven. <laughs> love is love, man. Do what you got to do. <laughs> I got Scarlett Johansson's uh, jacket. Sweet. Yeah. Selling that one to another perf. <laughs> you know your market very well, sir. Just gotta go on uh, what is it, Reddit? There you go. I, I don't even use Reddit. I don't either, but right. I'll figure it out. Story number three: Wildlife officials are trying to capture a surfboard stealing otter. Have you seen this story? I have not. Can you tell me more? I sure can. <laughs> <laughs> Wildlife officials in California said there's, they're attempting to capture a and rehome a sea otter that has been embarked on unusual crime spree stealing surfboards. Uh, so it's a five-year-old female known as Otter841, so I'm guessing it's tagged. Um, and it's stealing surfboards. So pretty much it'll jump on someone's uh, surfboard as they're surfing and knock them out and take the surfboard. That's pretty cool. It's pretty gangster. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
I wouldn't be mad, but I would honestly say like I just got. How much is a surfboard? I mean, surfboards are pretty expensive, right? Yeah, I don't know, like two, three hundred bucks. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. Maybe more. Probably more. Probably more. Maybe more. Depending on like how the quality, quality, yeah, yeah, brand and all that. But also, don't you attach it to your foot? That is true. But it's but it is yeah. But it's kind of a breakaway, isn't it? It's got like Velcro or something. No, I, th- no. I thought it was it supposed to like stay, stay on so you yeah, can find tethered it. to you so you get yeah, it doesn't like leave you. Right. And then if you need to get back on, so I don't know, maybe the otter bites it is off it, and then steals it. Like, it. Maybe, is it like on shore? Are they like setting them, setting them to the side and it's just like, oh, mine now. Yeah. <laughs> like, He's just, like Steven in wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. I just got robbed by an otter. Uh, yeah, they say they can't find it. It can't. They keeps evading the people. The uh, uh. <laughs> but what, is it like a? The it's the ocean, right? Yeah, yeah it's the ocean. I mean, I've never seen so an many otter in the ocean. I mean, I can see if I can play the video, but I... there's a lot of sharks out there. So I'm so... West Cliff Drive is a picture perfect site in Santa Cruz, the backdrop of many social media posts. But those picturesque images are being overshadowed by the surfing sea <laughs> otter captured in June by Native Santa Cruz. Oh, he's actually on Woodward. the thing. Since then. In the past five days now, there's been three more incidents of it, and they've all been much more aggressive. Much I have photographed a lot of otters over the years. <laughs> what um, a perv. I have otters. never seen anything like this. Warnings now on full display along the coastline, alerting visitors of the aggressive sea otter. We captured some otters resting, but could not tell if any of these is the one with the oh, blue tag gang. from the viral images. Through his lens, Woodward has seen the female yeah, otter approach many surfers and kayakers at the popular location. It was a true wrestling match over this surfboard, and uh, the person finally got it away. Holy um, shit. And it was wow, damaged. Damn. Basically, the board was destroyed. Literally, the day before that I filmed, um, the surfer was so freaked out by it that he left his board and swam back and forth without it. Behavior that the California Department of Fish and Wildlife calls concerning and unusual. CDFW says this five-year-old female southern sea otter also exhibited unusual behavior in the Santa Cruz area back in September 2022. Otter just took parts of his board. But nothing else until recently. They're actually pretty aggressive. Animals are not the cute and cuddly as people tend to think. SJSU's Moss <laughs> Landing Marine Marvel Laboratories movies, Professor David Ebert is surprised to learn about plans. the way this otter is acting. The CDFW says it may be due to hormonal surges mm. or because humans have fed her. Ebert says now. human interaction can have adverse... Main thing. I don't know. Mother Nature's fighting back. It is. With because the orcas. You got, yeah, the orcas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then recently they're off the coast of Florida. The sharks, right, and in New York on the borders. Oh, the sharks have been consuming cocaine that's been in the that's water. That's right. I forgot about that story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go to Florida. <laughs> it's just, let's go to the boat. I'll, I'll drop you off. With okay, the drop me off. I'll rent out the boats and I'll come back a hero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not because I'm killing the sharks. I'm just taking their stash. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I yeah, thought otters Mother were really Nature's cute. not fucking around anymore. I, honestly, man. I thought otters were cute too. I'm, I was under the impression that yeah. otters weren't aggressive like that. Me but either. those are big chunks that were taken out of that surfboard. <laughs> that sure probably got were. some cocaine on it. Right? Is it, co- is it <laughs> a cocaine, cocaine otter? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's going to be this one aggressive Australian guy who goes, I, I live in Australia and I could fight an otter. And he's got a knife in his leg so he could just fight back. Your imagination is so wild. I'm an only child, so, you know, you got to be able to keep yourself entertained. Especially when you're at work and you're at your desk and you got eight hours to do something. You know? <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. A though. lot of sense. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's news to me. We'll be right back after work from our sponsors. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. (laughs) Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15. TRUEFAN15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15 percent off of your entire order. What up? It's Martin Moreno, and you are listening to True Chicago Sports Fans Podcast. 
Welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with Big Z, and in studio with us is Stevie B and Ivan Vargas. Yes, let's uh, sh- shed some light on Ivan. I'm always here the last eight episodes, so it's the Ivan Show today. It is the Ivan Show. All right, guys, this is The Loop, our Chicago Sports Roundup, where we keep you in the loop. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome, welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. All right, so Ivan's no uh, rookie here, so he handles his own when it comes to the Chicago Bears. So I'm just going to kick it off to him, man. What's going on with the Bears? Well, I mean, so far, so so, <laughs> so good. Far, no, so no, nothing, nothing's happened so far, so I it's mean, not. You can't really say Bears what's going on. In what, like three days. Yeah, it's about three days training camp. Yeah. In three days, I think the 28th is the the, the first day of training yeah. camp. Or, or I think, no, actually, excuse me. I think they already started. They're already there, but I think the fans are able to go ahead uh, and go on the 28th. And gotcha, then, gotcha. Yeah. So I mean, with the Bears, you know. Just had a signing today. They just signed somebody off the. Uh, you were actually telling me this. I didn't. I didn't under, uh, know it until right now. Yeah, yeah. They actually had a signing today. But, but more importantly, what's going on with Chase Claypool? I want to get into that because Please do. you had a guy that had all the potential coming out of Notre Dame when he first came in, uh, drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I was thinking, you know, hey, you know, you had Ben Roethlisberger. He was aging. You had, you know some decent receivers there in Pittsburgh, you know, maybe this guy would be able to go ahead and start building rapport and building, you know, a name for himself, but it just never really came to fruition. And going into last season, you know, I, I trust Ryan Pace, but he makes this trade. You know, we, we give up our first, our, our second round pick, which ended up being the first pick of the second mm-hmm. round. You know, you can't, I mean, that's all retrospect. Like, that's all hindsight. Yeah, you didn't know you were going to end up getting but, one pick. But for a guy, and, you know, going back to Chase Claypool, you had, you've been cast off by your original team. They didn't want you. They were yeah. willing to, oh, a second round pick? Bye. Yes, sir, give me that. I'll take that. Bye. Mm-hmm. Hey, you didn't really do anything when you got here. What do you have, like 14 catches or something? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. You got hurt. And then, you know, you would expect a young guy who's been down on his, like, hasn't had a good start to, to, to his new te- with his new team, hasn't really shown the potential that once flashed, you would think he'd be hungry enough to go ahead and put the work in in the offseason, yeah. a critical offseason, not only for him, but for the Chicago Bears that have him under contract. Like, they're looking to build right now. They're looking for Justin Fields to take another step, and they were looking for him to be a big part of that. It doesn't look like his head is in football. No. It no. looks like he wants to do something post football and he's already there. He's a young man, but he looks like he has a lot of distractions in his life. And he just got uh, put on the, uh, the pup list, the uh, physically unable to perform list. And it's not because he's injured. It's not because it's because he's out of shape. Yeah, because he's, he's been at practice, but he didn't rehab when he. When you rehab, he wasn't getting into football shape. He was just like, I want, I want my body to be okay so I can clear the physical so I can get paid. Exactly. So now you have a guy who's just playing the system, doesn't seem to, to be interested in playing football, doesn't seem to be, you know, willing to take, you know, willing to sacrifice the time and put in the effort to go ahead and be the best player he could be. You need to go ahead and make a statement, and that was a statement. It wasn't just, you know, hey, we're, we're looking out for you. We don't want you to get hurt. No, you're not able to keep up with what we want. You're going to be put on the pup list. You're not going to be playing football right. until you're ready. And right. uh, they made a corresponding move by signing somebody from the Indianapolis Colts uh, practice squad. Yeah, they're, they're going to go ahead and take a, a chance on somebody else. Like, it, that's – that. To me, I like the direction the Bears are going. Even though Ryan Pace made a mistake, it looks like he made a mistake. Maybe we're proven wrong and right. Chase Claypool turns a corner this season. But I just don't see it. I don't see it. And I'd rather it be a Band-Aid right off. Yeah, rip it off right now. Than going yeah. ahead and trying to correct the mistake. Right. And then where is he going to play? Because he's, I mean, essentially he'd be the number three. But, I mean, they got a lot of, lot of wide receivers right now. And they are hungry. Yeah. They want that three spot. Yeah. Because you also have two tight ends that are going to take up some receptions. So not, even the number three guy is not going to get a lot of receptions. 
Right. No, no you're not. And, no, there, none of those guys are a Tom Water that's going to sit up in the middle. Mm-hmm. We don't have that type of player. And then even like you see Fields, Moore, and Mooney all practicing together. Yeah, they were in Florida together. And, then, yeah. and they're building a connection, chemistry, how they run, who they are, building the team development. And you don't see that from him. No. And they're all even hanging out. What at they, they're at a Bulls game one mm-hmm. time yeah. and yeah, it, building you, this connection. You saw, yeah, you saw that. Con- that was a good, great point. Like, you saw that. I, I was under the impression, like, oh, all right. Next step is take your asses down to Florida or, or to or somewhere where it's hot and start working. Right. Like start building a little rapport. I know you have a life and you got to do, you know, outside of football. You can't really just go down there and be down there for, like, six months. But maybe a month. Yeah. Maybe right before training camp. Maybe, maybe that time between OTAs and training camp, which is, you know, days. coming to an end. Right. Like, 40 days. 40 days. You could be doing that. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I don't see the love of the game out of Chase Claypool. It just. I, I just don't think he, he wants to play football anymore. I think his mind is on some other things. And you know, AJ <coughs> Brown. Yeah, yeah. AG, yeah. Pretty, well, <laughs> maybe not as bad. Not as well. Yeah, right. Maybe not but, as bad, but definitely is distracted. Right. Yeah. I, I. I think a lot of players now get easily distracted, and then once they get paid, well, they get paid up front. Most of these players are getting paid up front, and it's it's a catch twenty two, right? Right. Like, you want these guys getting paid for sacrificing their body. And, I mean, your job is literally to work out. Right. But playing football is the fun and easy thing. I think working out, staying in shape, taking care of your body, excuse me, that you're, you know, over here, like, oh, you know, I got clipped, I got uh, upended, whatever, or, like, the linemen. Those fuckers take a beating. They're car right. crashes every time, every time they line up. Those guys don't get paid enough. Yeah. Those wide receivers, are, are those are skill position where they do certain things, they run a route, whatever. They're, these guys don't even block anymore, and they and that's another thing. Like Chase Claypool, being the big body receiver that he is, you're gonna be blocking, mm-hmm. especially with the way the Bears want to play football. They want to run the football. They want to get off the edges, off tackle. They, and get the they ball need out that. Quick. They yep. need their receivers to be able to block. Mooney does a good job. I haven't I haven't seen a lot of DJ Moore blo- Moore's blocking, but if you put a Chase Claypool in there. That you're a big, you're six three. You're the big guy. You're mm-hmm. you're the go get it guy. But you're also the guy that needs to be locking down a cornerback when we have an outside run in order to spring somebody. Like right. you need to be able to trust them to do that. Right. And it's look, it it's all about conditioning, conditioning, conditioning. Right. During the off season, he wasn't doing it, and Iberflus ain't having it. I love Ryan it. Ryan Pace ain't having I it. Love like it. they're not like. No, Putting that's how an organization yeah. should work. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They did. They almost did it to Jalen Johnson. Uh, I believe it was last year. Yeah, last year. Um, he he came into training camp with a different mentality than they wanted him to have, and he, he thought it was and, hot shit. Yeah, and he almost got he almost got put in the same position. Yeah. Almost got put in the same position. That changed in a week, and he he even reiterated it. I, I forget the exact words, but he pretty much said, "Hey, it's it's a real deal." It was like you. You know, I wasn't in the right mindset. I'm in the right mindset now. You got to be ready to work. And if you're not ready to work, get the, get the hell off the field. Like, you're not going to be on the field. A lot of these guys, once they get their money, they don't realize that they're only getting paid during the football season. Once football season is over, you no longer get any paychecks. Also, you have to pay taxes on every single state that you work in. So every away game, now you got get you get a tax form from that state. And oh, that state. that's annoying. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm serious. And I know that because when I was in banking, I would have David Terrell, Bobby Wade. Um, I would have a bunch of the football players, like uh, Zuma would come by. And, um, you know, they'd call me like, hey, Z, I need to take out uh, $8,000. I'm like, David, it's, it's fucking Tuesday. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm getting off practice. I'll, I'll be there in an hour. David, David. Banks don't carry that amount of money. Well, we do. We do. $8,000. I mean, but I had, I had to, like, finagle it. Like, you know, get it cleared by the manager. But, David, what the fuck do you need eight grand for? He pulls up and with, uh, what's her face? Uh, Kelly Rowland in his truck. He's like, come outside. I'm like, I'm not walking out there with $8,000. You have to come in for that. He's like, no, come outside. Rolls down the window. Fucking Kelly Rowland. He's like, oh, say hi to Kelly. I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. I, I totally had blanked out who the fuck she was. Now she's the part owner of the fucking Chicago Sky. Right. And then Beyonce's dad and now Dwayne Wade. And it, it's a big group of people that own it now. But what the fuck do you need eight grand on a Tuesday for? Oh, you know what he needs eight grand on a Tuesday for? Mm, He's paying her eight grand. Strippers. And blow. Probably blow. I can imagine. David Terrell. Yeah, David Terrell, I can see him doing it. He was a knucklehead. Yeah, I can see him do I can see him That's being, a lot of yeah. cocaine. For eight grand, 
Oof. Well, I mean, it probably wouldn't buy. <laughs> I would say two grand went to Kobe. Maybe, yeah. Maybe well, two. You, you figured, maybe maybe you, like spread out his money that way. Yeah, you but, figure they're gonna spend money on bottles, dinner, then go uh, to a club, get bottles. There's gonna be cocaine, you know, and then you're looking at strippers afterwards. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's hell of a life. Yeah, and that's why he's broke now. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's I mean, true. Dude, what, look, when I can see it, like when they're on top. Yeah. Like a burning flame. <laughs> like, and that like, flame does burn out eventually. Oh, if quick. you're not taking care of it and feeding it and making sure it shines bright, mm-hmm. well, hey. <laughs> it's going to go. Sure. Guess who's not with Kelly Rowland, right? <laughs> <laughs> he, like, calls her, Kelly, take me back. She's like, hell no. She made her one. She gave residuals. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Steven, let's, uh, let's transition to the hardwood and let's talk uh, Chicago Bulls. What do you got for us? All right, so the Chicago Bulls have re-signed restricted free agent shooting guard A.O. DeSumo to a three-year... I.O. A.O. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the three years, $21 million <laughs> contract after the 23-year-old uh, emerged. emerged as a key player for the injured franchise player who you know, we know who was injured. We filled in for him. Mm, Lonzo Ball. There you go. Um... So he, he was helping out the season the last two seasons. So all right, let's let's talk Chicago Bulls because this team is probably as disappointing as my Chicago White Sox. What same the f- family owners too? So yeah, I know, I know, but this team is running the back with an old team. The, it's year got, three, you, right? You, you've got yeah. no outside shooting. You've got no defensive stoppers. Uh, your bench is super weak. Um, they don't use Vooch the way they're supposed to use. They use him for the first five minutes of the game and then forget about him the rest of the night. Zach and uh, and Demar cannot play together. There's two different styles of basketball. Um, what I don't know what to expect of this team besides being another 500 team because I know some of these guys are going to get hurt and we're back to square one. Uh, dude, uh, I'm so confused with <laughs> yeah. the Bulls. Like, hey, hey, trust me. Like everything that you're saying, like I I, I hear you. I, I I'm just like every other Chicago Bulls fan out there, what the fuck is going on? And it, it just... They're always it, in a position... It, I'm sorry, I started... Go, but they're always go. in the same position of, we can't get the big guy, so we're going to get a bunch of small guys, and they're way past their prime. Yeah, the, it's a B- Carlos Boozer all well, the time. Yeah, There's yeah. a bunch of Carlos Boozer yes. signings for the past, like, <laughs> yeah. 10 years. It's like, it, it, this isn't going to do it. I actually I mean, had I, his jersey. You did? <laughs> I did. Did you, did you I, paint I, your hair with a shoe polish? Hey, for a few I years, did, yeah. For a few years, I'll see you, you paint your hair. My mustache. <laughs> if you look at his numbers, he had great numbers. For for the first yeah. few years, yeah. I, like Carlos was okay, but then after that, it was never, like you said, get it was that never. Joe. Yeah, it was never the dude. Yeah. yeah, get that Joe. It was never the dude. He was never the dude, and it was never meant to be. But the hype was there, but then it wasn't after you're going to the Eastern Conference Finals and you know. Losing. All Derek. I mean, yeah, well, well, not, I want to say all Derek. That was like, a good. They were a good team. They were a good team. But Derek shooting, was yeah. definitely the carrying card, that yeah. team. Yeah. I, with the Bulls, it's just like the White Sox. And I know we're going to get to the Sox, you know, later. But just go ahead and clean house. Like I'm, I'm, I'm to the point where it's like Zach needs to go. Well, there's rumors DeMar. that New York wants him. Right, right. But the Bulls want a King's ransom for him because he did sign a Supermax. Right. Wow. That was another mistake. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> you know, know what I'm saying? Like, to me, I never thought, like, I thought Zach Levine for the first couple of years, I was like, all right, cool. I think this guy could be a leader. Yeah. Just never took another step. No. You know what I mean? He finally got to the All-Star game. And I was like, okay, this is where you take a step, Zach. And it's just, he never took another step. It He's never, on it, Team USA. Yeah, not on Team It's just. He played good right after Team USA at the beginning of the season, and then just, I don't know what happened to him. Like I said, he, he just disappears. He shrinks mm-hmm. when the spotlight's yes. on. He shrinks. And Demar seems to rise, so that's why Demar has been getting the favorable uh, uh, matchup. He's been giving the ball a lot more. Yeah, been, the, ball, he's the a ball's closer. been putting his hands a lot more. And it's just with Zach Levine, like let's just move forward. Let's move on from Zach. Let's move on from Demar. If you want to keep Vooch, fine. See, but you're going to have to figure something out because you can't just march these guys out here for the next two to three years and be like, hey. We're going to do it this year, guys, because no, we're not. We're not. We're not. And then you don't have development. And with the Chicago Bulls have not developed anybody. Look at what we talked about on an earlier episode, Larry Marketing. They didn't know how to use him. He ends up being traded to Cleveland. They don't know what the hell to do with him. He feels out of, out of whack. He's from a different country. He's in a different city now. Doesn't understand it. He finally gets acclimated in Utah, and he's a fucking all-star just dominating. 25 points, 11 rebounds, three blocks. I mean, he's killing it. 
Same thing with uh, Bobby Portis. Leaves yeah. the Bulls, sixth man of the year. Yep. I mean, gets a championship. Mm-hmm. Oh, I get it. But the thing is how I look at the, those three. If you have Vooch, DeMar, and Levine, Levine likes shooting the three. Okay, keep him on the third. Streaky. Right. Very streaky. Right. When he's hot, he's hot. DeMar shoots it right where the where you're going to shoot the free throw in the post. Well, and then if you want to shoot, if he doesn't go in the post all the time, throw it into Vooch. He's a mid-range You just king, yeah. throw it straight down the line. One, two, three. If one, if one's not open for the three, throw it to DeMar. DeMar's not open, throw it in the paint for, uh, for he, all that. Here's the issue with that. No one fucking rebounds on this team. No, that's as uh, soon as they shoot, they just run back. Right. No one is rebounding. I would like. Support. I w- once the season starts, we should start betting that they're going to get under. I don't know, ten rebounds a quarter. Vooch is a double double machine, so that's easy money. Bet that shit right. every fucking night. Right. That's what I do the NBA season. Well, I mean, you could. He, he's talking about a quarter. I'm talking about a quarter. Like, like a, oh. te- a team could get maybe. I mean, a team could probably get ten rebounds in a quarter. Yeah. I mean, if they're the shooting the enough, shoot? yeah. If they're shooting enough, not offensive rebounds, <laughs> not offensive, not offensive defense, yeah. rebounds, but they could get defensive. Which rebounds. will get six defensive. Rebounds. Okay, so I meant offensive rebounds. But, but I'll, e- I'll either way, under ten, easy. E- either way, you're right. I mean, the team is has so many flaws. It's not just Zach. It's not just Demar. It's not just a bad contract. They've just don't like you said development, the decision making on who they're going to bring in, the, what those players can do for you. It's all just kind of fugazi, man. Yeah, and Kobe it, White it, is. Was this the kid it, that we just drafted from overseas? We just cut him. Yeah, was a um, Samanovic. Did they just cut yeah, Samanovic? Yeah. Samanovic. So, so there you go. No, no development. And then they wrote a nice little Instagram post, best of luck, which I thought was stupid. Like it's you're calling him out, and he wasn't even that's, here that long. That, that's that nothing to do with the team. That's the PR. That's, I know, but that, I'm that's, also that's in marketing. marketing. That's marketing and, and PR. I, yeah, that's trying to put you know a nice picture in front of you. That's all that shit is. Don't no, I know. They, and they look like assholes. They do. They do. Like that's why. Like that's what I'm going with it. Like front office PR, everything. Like in we're there. supposed to be. Why, what are we? What are we going to congratulate some out of it? <laughs> is this is this just a post just for you guys? Like that's. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we don't care about Samanovich. Like, we never even seen him play. He played like six minutes all season. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It, the Bulls team is fucking frustrating. And then, you know, Kobe White is an example of Kobe somewhat White development. And Zach Levine are the same fucking person. Right. Yeah. I, I, they, Kobe White is streaky, just like Zach, but Kobe White also can, he can turn the ball over just like Zach, and yeah, he they disappears can't dribble. just they, like Zach. They both can't dribble. I don't know mm. what it is. They can't dribble in traffic. Yeah. I don't know. I think I they might be less than five hundred. No, don't make five hundred. I, mean, I don't even want it to be five hundred. I want them to be over. But you know, the last two seasons they couldn't beat good. They would beat good. The last season they beat good teams, and they would lose to the you know the crappy teams, right? Yeah. And then the following year they would beat the crappy teams. They couldn't beat the good teams. So we'll see how the season goes. But I'm interested in season tickets and how much they are and what they're going to be. I'm curious to see that. I mean, I'll go and you know. To ask people what you're doing here. What are, what should what should season tickets be for a non playoff team? Like I know I know what their promises say, mm-hmm. but like what are they gonna like really march out there? Because the experience at yeah, the United the experience. Center. All yeah, of us have go, all go of us had Shaq, experience. LeBron, like what was that Norm, Norm Van Leer that, that Norm Van Leer commercial? <laughs> you can see Kobe. It's like these motherfuckers aren't on our team. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, no, it's. Yeah, it, it's that was just the baby like, bulls. Yeah, the baby bulls. Yeah, the baby I bulls. That. Oh man! <laughs> and I was sitting like two rows behind the bench. I'm like, yes, I'm here. And and I, and I thought we got out of that darkness. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I thought we I thought we left that that bad land. But I it, don't know. It's, Chicago stuck in in you know medi- mediocre mediocre however you want to say it. Fucking just every team. I mean, if you have a okay job and you're in Chicago, you're just gonna keep that job until you get let go or you find another one. I mean, I did apply for the Bulls. Oh, okay. So did I, but it wasn't paying much, and no, I, 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 I think I, I was. It was to. But for point guard. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm small hey, enough. I mean, I mean, we might as well start taking. They might as well start taking uh, uh, flyers. Well, oh, they like, did cool. have open tryout. Yeah, they last did last week. Yeah, they had open tryout. One day open tryout at the at uh, the uh, Advocate Center. So I don't know who else. I mean, I, they have holes to fill. So I don't know. I I would love to watch that. Yep, I'm in. I'd be, be there. Cool. I would all be these, there. All these street hoopers who think they can actually play. They probably are all done by, by conditioning. Oh, gassed. 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 Like, they're like, oh, what? We got to run for an hour. <laughs> 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 I thought we were just going to play in ball. <laughs> no. Running gun ball, yeah. Mm. All right, let's, uh, you want to take a break or you want to go straight into Cubs? 
Uh, it's up to you. I mean, I'm. I mean, we could take a break. Yeah, yeah. We'll take a quick break. break. All, right. Smoke, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back uh, with more True Chicago Sports fans with Ivan and Steven. Uh, we'll come back and talk some uh, baseball. Cubby Blue, baby. All right, we'll be right back. Hey, True Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out GritClothingCo.com and use the promo code TrueFan15. TrueFan15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15% off of your entire order. Hey guys, it's Steven. And this is Sean, and you are listening to True Chicago Sports Fans. Don't forget to listen to No War on the Weekend. New episodes on Monday. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Yeah, so we're going to go do a couple of shots. So let's kick it back over to Big Z. Welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with Big Z. We got Stevie B and Ivan Vargas. Yes, yes, yes. All right, guys. Uh, let's get into some baseball. I know it is the middle of the baseball season. We got about 100 games played in. Yes, so let's do. talk about our Chicago Cubs first this time. Oh, yes. Awesome. The best yeah. team in town. Yeah. Well, yeah, they are better. I'm glad Ivan's on my side. I mean, it's just the truth. Like, uh, th- no pun intended, but it, yeah. They're a better a team right now. Yes, they are. But you know what's coming up? The Crosstown, and that decides. That's our World Series, man. That, that decides who's the better team. Ivan, does that matter to you? <laughs> it does. It, it does. It really. It, it it's does. bragging rights. Like, like yeah. It, see, I like my family's all from the south side. Like on on my mother's side, they're they're all from the south side, and we have a big family. Mm-hmm. So they're all Sox fans. Yeah. So I'm I've the been same teased. Like like I've been like I haven't let go of some of the teasing that I like I've of course held on to from right. the past. So it's like especially after 03, Oh god. Mm-hmm. Like it was just yeah. That was your year. Yeah, they were just beating us up. Like, they were just beating me up with, with the insults. I'm like, yeah, I got it. We lost. Leave me alone. But, um, I'm going to go cry. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go cry. And, <laughs> you know, and then on top of that, the World Series and everything. But I just, like, I I love seeing it. I love the back and forth. I mean, don't go shooting somebody. Like, yeah, you know, don't yeah. go trying to stab each other. No, like, no, use your words. Use your words. But the back, and, the back and forth, that's fine. I love that stuff. Like, you know, Use you your hands. Okay. Yeah. yeah it, <laughs> no I mean, We're Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll hit some key points. Like, uh, Cubs believe that they have what it takes to make a playoff push. The Yankees and Rangers have been inquiring about Bellinger. I, He's a free agent at this end of the year. He is a Scott this. Boris fucking eight, uh, 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 client. He is not going to renegotiate midseason. He's going to wait till the end of the season, get his bag, with, you know, all 30 teams negotiating to get him. I understand that. He said he loves Chicago. He, I mean, obviously, he's rehab. Well, of course you're going to say that when you're here. I actually yeah. think he genuinely likes being here. He, when he was on the Dodgers, mm-hmm. he would rake at, at Wrigley Field. Like, it was, I felt like it was one of his better. Yeah, like he was a Cubs killer. Yeah. He would just kill us. Every time we play him, mm-hmm. no matter what at Wrigley, he was getting hits, home runs, just destroying us. So, as far as his career, I think it's a, it was a great decision to come to a ballpark that you're comfortable in. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the Cubs, like, they do a decent job with bringing in guys and kind of, you know, especially a guy that had an a MVP season before. Right. They were able to go ahead and build, them back build up. him back up. Right. Exactly. Thank you. And I'm good with him leaving, though. Like, I'm actually, I'm down with them trading. Like, don't get me wrong. I would rather, I, I'm a huge Cubs fan. I love what's going on. But if you got a, if you got the King's Ransom for Stroman, if you got a King's Ransom for Bellinger, if you got a King's Ransom for Kyle Hendricks, or something that you think is going to help you in the future to maybe move and get somebody of, of quality, do it. Because, you know, there, there's a lot of people that point to the Orioles. The Orioles finally had a great season. Uh, like, they're they finally still, they still coming. Are. They no, no, I mean, season, last, right. last year. Last, last year, year first, they did, yes. It yeah. was their first season above five. Like, they were... They were looking like a good baseball team. Absolutely, like 100 a, games, right? Yeah, yep. instead of like a Triple A farm club for the past like what 15 years, mm-hmm. 10 years, something like that. And they had a player that was in the All Star, uh, not All Star, Home Run Derby. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But he got screwed. But what they know. did, what they did is they played it smart 
for themselves. They're like, what do we really have? Are we going to be able to be a playoff team that makes a push? Or are we going to be a team that goes ahead and throws something at trading some for you know somebody now and just don't make it? It just doesn't work out. And yeah. now we have to reset and work all over again. I, I am all on board with getting the best deal you can for any of those three guys or anybody on the, on the Cubs. It, it's just it makes sense, especially if you can't win the World Series. This if you don't believe it, I don't. Don't do it. I don't. And yeah. I'm doing that from the outside, not being it. a hater, but the Cubs, I don't see them beating anybody in a five or it's seven game series. It's the truth. No, I agree with that. And I, I agree with that. I want to believe that they could go to the playoffs. And, you know, I wouldn't want them to go, but I'd like them to show some fight. They do show fight. They, they they're do. a good but I team. Mean, no, no, no. But I mean as like getting it's either, close. The problem close is with them, they're, 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 they're a bang or bust. It's, right. it's a lot of runs or they give up a lot of runs. It's, it's, it's one way or the other. Right. Um, you don't see them winning close games. You, and well, again, they do come back if they're down. No, no I know that, they and, and that. that that that's great. That team, that means that team has fight. There, there's continuity there, right? But then I'm saying, if they get close or they're like, you know, fighting for a spot, but they don't actually what, win, they're eight games out. Yeah, I mean, that's still a lot. Well, well because, the schedule that they're playing right now could change it up and could be four. But you know what? The Cardinals came in hot playing you guys. They had won five in a row, and they there was like a nine. Six in a row. There was six in a row. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Five in a row. Then and they, they won beat six. Us, yeah. And then right. Six. And they've won nine out of 11 or something like that. They came in hot. I mean, again, all these teams in the Central are weak and they're just taking turns of beating up each other. And none of those teams are going to be able to beat Atlanta. No. The Dodgers. None of the, the those are the two backs. teams. The Diamondbacks. Then they beat the. Di- uh, I'll give you the teams that are in the, like, in the hunt right mm-hmm. now for the wild card. I'll give you the division leaders and the wild card. Right? Yeah. The, the Braves. No. No. Yeah. No. We've already seen them lose a series to the, to the Philadelphia Phillies. They probably can't beat the Miami Marlins. Nope. The Cincinnati Reds. You saw them they're lose com- to them. And they're coming in next week. Yeah, and they're yeah, coming in next after, week. Yeah, after, on what, uh, Thursday. Yeah, right, right. after the Sox. Yeah. yeah. The Brewers. No. Uh, the Dodgers. Hell no. No. The Diamondbacks. The Giants. Hell, the, the Padres. I don't, I just, I don't see it working out for them. Right. Especially with the pitching that they have. I need them to go. I need them to collect some prospects, go make a big trade, and get somebody that throws heat. Yeah. The Cubs just have some soft serve pitchers. I know I like Stroman, I like Steele, I like Hendricks, but Hendricks you need is somebody. Done. But that's, that's it. That's all you got. Hendricks you, is done. You need somebody that scares a motherfucker. Oh yeah. Like yeah. you need somebody. That's like, oh shit! I got to go face Nolan Ryan. I mean, I'm not. I'm obviously I'm not Nolan Ryan. But somebody that's going to throw heat and like be Verlander. nasty. Or Randy Johnson. Right. Get some, well, yeah, Verlander just, in his heyday, yeah. He, yeah he, even he, Frank Thomas talked about it. He's like, he had my number. And he, and he, and he, Verlander wears 35 in honor of Frank Thomas just because he struck him out so much. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. I'm a big fan of Randy now. Randy? Or um, Verlander. Justin Verlander? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, Verlander's a beast. And again, we have a lot of disappointing teams all over MLB that spent a lot of money, like the Mets, the Padres. Right. I think the Padres still a disappointment. Uh, the Cardinals, another disappointment. But they that's had. what I'm seeing, like saying, like, yeah, they spend that money and it could they could be off. And, you know. The Orioles and Tampa Bay don't spend money and look where they're at. It's farm system. Right. That's that's system wide from top to bottom. This is what long, we're going to do. How long has it it's taken? Took, it's taken a long right. time. Because they guys. had that to read the clean house from top to bottom and say, no, this is how we're going to do it. It took them four years to do that. They, Chris Davis. Mm-hmm. Dude, dude was a home run monster. And then the next He's three, an four. He, and yeah. And then he couldn't hit. Couldn't hit. It was like 083. And I, I, now he's hitting. I forgot what team he's playing with, but he's hitting now. And I'm like, um, he's hitting. And like, yeah, he's in the ma- minors again. Yeah. He's hitting. Yeah. So it's like, it, it baseball is such a weird sport, and money really doesn't buy you a championship. Right. Not like the NBA, where you can buy a championship. I feel like you can do that with the NBA. But I just feel like, you know, with the Cubs, like they have the fight. Anything could happen. But then when you start trading and you're getting these prospects, it's kind of like, well. I understand you're looking for the future, like same thing with the Bears. But as a fan, I like to have some excitement going to the ballpark. I just don't want to go to the Dude, ballpark. Dude, that ballpark is never empty. I they, understand that. They probably but leave I like in to the go. Tenant. But it's, it's, yeah. it's been falling down lately. Like, people aren't just going to – I mean, it's expensive. This weekend, dude, it was jam-packed. No, no, I mean, but it's also Cardinals. Cardinal, right. Yeah, it's also Cardinals. Cubs, Cardinals. So you're going to get like a maybe 60-30 crowd or maybe even, you know, more evenly split. Yeah. But – People aren't, because of how, I mean, 
what we're living in now, this economy and everything mm-hmm. like that. Inflation. People are, inflation. People aren't just going to go ahead and pay for a team that's losing. No. Or no. just right. Sub, uh, you know, sub, that level of look across shit. town. Yeah. That's exactly it's what it is. Thing, yeah. and that's a, the, the White Sox fans do not show up if the team sucks. Mm-hmm. Right. And But they're going to have a good attendance the next two days. That's for sure. Oh, G- no, I mean, that's I told you, that's the World Series of Chicago. It's right. going to be jam-packed, standing room only. That's every year. Actually, well, we'll get into it a little bit later, but I did find some clips when I was researching. I think it might have been like 03, 05, um, 07, those three years, those clips. Wrigley was kind of like half empty. And I, it doesn't, I don't know, maybe it was the weather, maybe it rained at it. I don't explain it, but I'm like, the bleachers are kind of half empty. I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me. No, it doesn't. Maybe they all went to the bathroom that day. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in line. They're all right. in line trying to get into the bathroom. But Now, who has a trophy? The White Sox. Oh, yeah. I forgot, that was the, I forgot about the trophy. The Wind Trust. Uh, Wait, what is it now? It's Wind Trust now. Okay, yeah. Wind Trust. The Wind Trust Cup, Cup, whatever it is. I mean, that's the closest Cup. thing that you're ever going to get. So. Um, we're not. Either team is not winning shit. Well, maybe not this season, but I, I have faith. I mean, we're going to win the Crosstown Cup. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. That's that's. I mean. I think so. We'll see. We'll see. We'll I want to make a bet, but nah, I'm afraid we, to make we, a bet. We, we we got enough Ivan, do you know the bet that's going on between me and Big Z? I don't. So at the beginning of the season, uh, December, January. Yeah. He said that the White Sox wouldn't win 65 games. Now. He's at the time, everyone made fun of me. Yes. Everyone, everyone shitted on me. Yeah. And everyone thought I was crazy. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was looking at the stats of the last of the uh, Royals and uh, who, I don't know who else was last, last. Detroit. 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 So I was going off of that. Okay. Again. Uh, so, yeah. But yeah. then everyone's talking really loud. There's like six people. Somehow the number came to $200. I doubled down. And... <laughs> Ivan, I gave him an out. I told him by the All Star, uh, all the trade deadline, anything well, like that. I got a couple days. I want out. That if he wants to opt out, it's two hundred dollars. All right, now there's sixty one games left, and I'm, I did. I, I, I'm, I know. I'm, I'm like doing the math. I did the math. They, they need like, twenty six, <laughs> twenty five. Right. So they have to win thirty seven percent of their games. Right. Now, if they're sellers, you're. Looking, they might play fucking even better if they're sellers. I'm gonna tell you the truth right now. <laughs> Look at Ivan. Ivan's doing Ivan, the math in his Ivan's head. praying that I win this two hundred bucks. <laughs> Ivan, if I win it, <laughs> Ivan, if I win these two hundred dollars, I'll buy you a beer, two beers, and a shot. Because I want a Cubby good. fan to enjoy this money. That sounds with good. Me. I think that you have a legitimate chance. Now he does, especially after we started especially, with a ten game losing streak yeah. at the beginning of the season. I, I right. mean, first, like, I I would have thought you were crazy too. Yeah. Like, I would have been like. They have to have a bad year, and I wouldn't have believed it because I thought they were going to have a really good, like a bounce back year. But yeah, you have a legit shot, especially if like they trade Kopech or they start trading like they start trading. Yeah, you it's, know, it's gonna yeah. Tim Anderson. Tim Anderson's yeah. gone. Like, but but yeah, so that's our bet right now. We'll jump into the White Sox because we saw we're watching the White Sox together yesterday, <laughs> and but we'll jump into that. But uh, I just think if the Cubs trade Strowman, I understand that. I like. I, I, bombs, I, I don't think I, you should trade Strowman. I don't think so either. I would like for them to keep one of them. I don't think they're going to keep any you don't, of them. You don't trade away good pitching unless you're rebuilding. Right. And good and you, pitching and is you hard guys, to find. You're not rebuilding. Right. The entire Cubs thought process was 2024 that they would compete. Right. That's next year. Right. And Why wouldn't you keep lock this kid up who wants exactly. to be here? Exactly. Who's a fucking stud who is an ace on your rotation? I don't understand. Yeah, me, no. me either. So I, I, I don't know. I agree with you. We'll see. It, you have to, again. You're getting more prospects. You have to see the deal, though. because if and I get you're getting more prospects, and prospects aren't always. No, you don't like, know, you don't and they have to be developed. Know. And yeah, but like I said, those prospects can turn into the pitcher that you need. You know what right. I mean? You they, can they turn, they can into, turn the, into the, the, and that could that could open up an, uh, a spot for somebody that you have in a farm system mm-hmm. to move up, like. It, it, it's it sucks because, like you said, you want to see something that you like. I love seeing Strowman out there. I'm, so I, I love yeah. the energy. I, I, like, love, yeah. I, I enjoy it. But I also, like, I see the business side, and I see how one move can affect the future and change everything 100%. for a franchise. Right. So it's like if the, if the juice is worth the f- squeeze – I could see them doing it. Yeah, so could I. I don't. I'm disappointed because I want them to keep everyone and spend more money, but that's not exactly gonna happen. It's business. But your cornerstone is gonna be Swanson, right? 
Yeah, but he's well, what? He has to be your corner. I mean, yeah, you, 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 you pay, paid him big you money. Paid him. You got him, say, uh, say, a Suzuki. Who's been kind of a disappointment? Because uh, yeah. do you expect him to have power numbers? I he doesn't have him, it. I, yeah, I, I want him to be like two seventy five. I mean, yesterday like he had a good game, runs. right? Maybe like. Maybe not 25 home runs, but like flirting with 20. Yeah. You know, somewhere up there. Yeah, I mean. But I think yesterday he had a good game. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he yeah, has yeah, good he, games, but he, it's not consistent. I get that point. What yeah. you, well, you, when you signed him, you thought you had a good contact hitter. Right. Like you said, he can run into 20 home runs, especially at Wrigley. Um, Ian Happ, up and down. Uh, who's, who's the other kid? Um, Patrick Wisdom. Patrick Wisdom, yeah. who's been hurt. But I, I actually like Patrick Wisdom at third. Right. He's got a cannon. Right. I, I mean, I, I uh, think they need to find a, one of the two. And Ian Happ. Or, or third base. Yeah, Ian Happ is a disappointment too. Oh my god. They, and, and don't put Nico. Uh, no, Nico two strikes Nico's in. Great. I, I like Nico. I, I, I even I, even with his struggles like lately, I like Nico. He's he can, he's proved that he can hit the ball. He's yeah. proved that he can play, and he's proved his defense is just you know top notch. So I would love. A Nico Swanson combo up the middle for a while. Oh, you're talking about Nico Horner. Nico Horner. Not yeah. Nico. Two, not Nicky's two two strikes. No, 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 no. no. Nicky, oh, no, no. I thought you were talking about Nico I got Horner. What no, Horner's fine. About. No, Horner's fine. No. Horner's fine at Nicky, second. Nicky two strikes. They put him at third base. I'm like, he does not have the arm for he, third base. No. Like, I don't know what the hell is going is to happen. That's your coach, man. That's your coach putting him gonna, there. Yeah, I know. I don't know what's going to happen to him. But as far as the, like the corner, the corners need to be solved. Yes. The corners need to be solved. Like Matt I, Mervis, what he came up, he struggled. I mean, that's gonna happen. Every guy does that. They go up Mo. and down. Huh? Uh, Mo. Mo who? Uh, morale. Oh, morale too. Yeah. Oh, well, morale. Morale's, Morale's been, fine. He's been good, yeah, but Mo, he, Mo. you know, he did that transition of playing what? He was playing short. outfield, and then they put him at second base, now, and then they put him at short. I'm like, what the plays fuck? Plays everything but catcher. And yeah, pitch. but it, I mean, he looks good playing what second? Yeah, he looks good playing. I mean, you know, or he, sometimes he's a grinder. Stuff. He can play anywhere. Yeah, right. he's a guy that you could put somewhere, and you're like, we'll be all right. Yeah, like, we'll his athletic okay. ability. He's like oh. a good Ryan Terrio, you know, yeah. the right yeah, yeah. or Mike Fontenot, you know, right, right. Those yeah. guys look like brothers. Yeah, they're all everywhere. Yeah. yeah, he's able to run everywhere. He's able to field, you know, everything like very athletic. Yeah. I mean, I I would love to be above 500. I think that would be my ideal. You're five, thing. you're five games out of 500, right? Right. I uh, believe so. Yes. Yeah. You got that up there. Six yeah. and a half. Six and a half. But I would love for that to happen because the last couple five, of years, five we, and back of the wild card. So. We, oh, there we go. Right. We've been under 500, and I've told you, I you know David Ross, I didn't believe was a great signing to re-sign him, but if he keeps having under 500 seasons, it's like. You know, you're respected as a player, and you know how to talk to players, but do you have the mentality to be that coach? So Can you make that there's transition? There's been a lot of questionable calls, and I've been watching Cubs games when I can, when I'm, right. when I'm at bowling, they're up there, but there's a lot of questionable calls of what he's been doing. I would give him, because of what they've said, because of what the Cubs are saying, they expect to go and compete. In 2024. Next year, right? You this, give him that extra year. target date. Yeah. I want to see him With one talent. year into that. Like, after, after next year... That's when you're like, all right, we got to make a decision on David Ross because mm-hmm. right. now you should have been able to reload your farm system, give him the players that he needs, give you know, have everything at your disposal now. You know, make a big signing. No like, excuses. There's no excuses. No money excuses. No nothing. So you better be active in free agency, mm-hmm. active at the trade deadline with whether it be a big you know acquisition or just something small to accumulate draft picks. But I think you need to give him. This one last year with everything on the table mm-hmm. because I don't think he's been given like you know a full chamber. No, they really don't. No, it's like I it's can like understand he, the first couple of years you're working with pretty much nothing. Right. But I mean I feel like this year like you have a average team so give me a 500 at least in and my at, eyes. At this point you got to believe in the front office because they let go of KB. They let go of. Uh, um, KB's not doing that well. Rizzo's that's what I'm in saying. a slump. Rizzo, the only one Rizzo hit a, I had four for four with a home run yet, uh, yesterday, so yeah. he's out of that he slump. Finally hit a home run. Yeah, yeah, finally. He, he, it was like two or three months he's about a home run. Yeah. But Schwarberg he, is the one that I wish he would have capped. That was mm-hmm. a mistake. That, that was, was yeah. a big that mistake. That was the mistake because he was only worth $10 million at the time, and you could have signed him to a two, three-year contract. He signed for $8 million and, uh, with yeah. uh, was it the Nationals. The Nationals. The Nationals. Yeah. And, I mean, look at him now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, and he was with Boston, and he won a ring. Right? Oh, no, 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 no. No. No, 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 no. He almost did, but they didn't. They, yeah, they didn't uh, make it. They got uh, beat by I can't remember who. 
But they had a chance with Philadelphia when he was with Philly. Yeah. They went to yeah. the World Series. Yeah, every every team in Philadelphia lost the championship. I know. I loved it. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was good. Good. That was enjoyable. That was good. Soccer, football, basketball. And, and, well, well, basketball, they didn't get close. They didn't get the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm saying they didn't and, make it. Yeah. Nobody, nobody made it. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty good. So we're, we're saying 2024, that is the opening of the window for the Chicago Cubs. No, that's, yeah, that, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. now you, your kids, Pete Cor Armstrong should be coming up. Mm-hmm. Mervis should be coming up. Uh, who's the other kid you have up there? Oh, he's so good. Eric, Eric, uh, damn it. He's been down there for a while. He's I always been be hurt. surprised if they, if they come up. I wouldn't be surprised if they even get here because, like I said, don't be surprised if there's some trades in the offseason. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're like, hey, we could get this guy because there's a team that's struggling. Or, you know, they have, he was solid for them, but their team isn't going anywhere or their team's, you know, needs yeah. a, a salary dump or something. You could go ahead and make a trade with. Right with those players, so like well, New York might be sellers. Yeah, we don't know. And, and they've never been sellers. They've always been well, pretty much buyers. No, we're talking about the Mets. Oh, the Mets are going to be sellers. There's no way that you keep that payroll with that team sucking that bad. That's New York. You're, you're going to see the Rangers. You're going to see Atlanta. You're going to see the Dodgers. You're going to see um, maybe Pittsburgh, maybe Cincinnati. You try to poach as many players from other teams that are disappointments, including the White Sox. To try to get their their championship, there's a lot of teams that are in contention that's never won a championship, and it's it's time. Another team that's this is the point right now. They were watching Seattle. I thought I thought this would be the team right. this year with all that talent that they have that they would be competing, but they're not that good. Yeah, we'll see. All right, let's transition to the White Sox. Yeah, yeah, the, fun the, times. We're gonna continue the, the the slip and slide or the the spiral downward. No, that is the White Sox. No, we're at like the little kid dinosaur ride that goes in a circle. It's not even a roller coaster. It's just a little thing. It goes around like five times and you're done. It's that little horse outside of Venture. Right. That's the ride the quarters, that's that it. gets broken all the time. <laughs> Venture. <laughs> yeah, it's showing my age. Uh, the White Sox have just won five games this month after killing. Killing in June. It's just it's insane. The Twins winning the series, which was a series that the White Sox had to sweep. To stay in contention, to stay in like oh push mode, but this team doesn't have it, man. This team doesn't have heart. This team doesn't have the the will to win, as Hawk would say. Um, I don't think Corfal is the right manager for you. I, I think that everybody, including myself, was shitting on Tony Larusa for the past you know the two years that he was there, but he was way above five hundred. <laughs> That's true. I, to, to be honest with you, like with all Tony's flaws, like. You have to, th- and he, he he did. It was it was yes, Tony. Right. There was a lot that had to do with Tony issue yeah. wise. The drinking, the, the gambling. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, outside of personal issues, but in the clubhouse, like yeah. the there drinking. was there was no no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a fracture with the players. Like there was a fracture that he couldn't fix. Like I I mean, if you don't have a team with a guy like Jose Abreu, a guy like Tim Anderson, mm-hmm. and, and all these talented players gelling together in that locker room. Ain't, there's nobody in the world that's going to fix it. No, and it, it just carried over this year. Yeah. And it's funny because when Ricky Renteria was there, that was not an issue. And the Cubs fired him because they moved on to a new manager. Right, yeah. To, and to get a good manager. And he did a good job. He did a good job with the Cubs. He brought them back to life. White Sox did the same thing. Ricky's boys don't quit. Hey, Moncada, you, you didn't run the first? Sit right here next to me. You're done. Mm-hmm. And he would hold his players accountable. Exactly. And guess what? The players complained. Went up to the front office, and guess what? He's gone. Now, Rickon wants to get a new manager. Sorry. Put the handcuffs on, sir, because you ain't you ain't hiring nobody. The owner comes down, says, oh, no, my boy's going to gonna, gonna home, come here and manage, and I'm going to rectify something from 40 years ago for no reason. Tony was done. Yeah. I'm he's not saying he's a, he's a Hall of Fame manager. He is a mastermind. He's, he's, he's a fucking lawyer. Shit, he's smart. But there's times that you're, the game is going to pass you by. And that's exactly what happened. Right. He, everybody was like, oh, but he speaks Spanish too. Like, that doesn't matter. If two guys don't get along with each other, you can't fix that. You know yeah, you got a race perfect? war on the ball club. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you know what would have been perfect? If yeah. You would have, if, and, and this is all hindsight. Like, obviously, I was right. like, oh, I guess Ricky's got to go too. But if you look at it, if they would have kept Ricky and just put Tony in a. Uh, 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 like a supervised, like a pre- advisor, you know, advisor role. 
I think that might have been better that, off than anything. Cause yes. Now, because now you have two guys that speak Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because so, the rest of the staff doesn't speak Spanish. Right, okay, right, come right. on, guys. <laughs> exactly. That's but, the issue. That's yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now you have, now you, now you could rectify whatever you rectified, and you keep a guy that was, he's the last guy that got you to a, the playoffs. Yeah. He's the last, did you get a win in that series? No, 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 no. No. no, no, no. That was a one and done, right? One and done. Yeah, that was, that was a one, one and done. done. And but then he was the last guy to get you to the playoffs. He got to the playoffs, and then Tony Russo had the same team, got to the playoffs, and they lost. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So Tony both, got to both, the yeah. Okay, I forgot. The yeah. 2020 season. The 2020 season. It was a short season that, that he, yeah. 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 It doesn't count in my book. Well, well the Dodgers won the World Series, so it counts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. <laughs> my second team. I mean, again, Grafal, uh, again, they picked somebody out of the obscurity of the woods, which is Kansas City. <laughs> for no fucking reason And their record was not any great But this guy's never been a manager He's always been every position but a manager And you know he comes in With his past comments like oh we're gonna play hard We're gonna play the right way And we're not gonna tolerate this other bullshit And everyone believed it Oh I didn't I'm, I'm like this is not the guy You could have got um, the Rangers manager um, Bruce Bochy They didn't wanna pay Bruce Bochy How much were How much did he get paid? A lot more than this. I'm gonna tell you right now. He probably gets like what 13, 15 million a year or something like that. Something mm. small yeah. in comparison to what he can do. He's a proven winner. He took to the Giants to three World Series in, in three three times that nobody believed the Giants were right. gonna win the World Series. <laughs> right. He did it three times. <laughs> right. It's a, he's like the equivalent of of, uh, uh, of the Blackhawks. You know, right. three three different cups in three in 2010, 13, and 15 within a matter of five year span. I get, yeah. Right. right. So like. You could tell he's a proven manager, no nonsense, but can let the players do what they want to do, kind of have fun, this, this, and that. But he's a no nonsense fucking coach, and that's what we needed. You have it up there? It's. I didn't get the. It number. doesn't have the uh, the number, but it's a three year contract. It's a three year contract. Let me look, let me look up. For, gotcha. Yeah. But you know, it's it's yes, it is the manager, but also this weekend between drop balls, between falling down. Example oh, like yesterday. Oh, you got Colas falling down. The wind took it to the right. I mean, that's going to happen. I mean, Colas already threw somebody out earlier in that game. They weren't trying to run on him. It's just the fact that he fell down. I'm like, fuck it. I'm taking and the base, too. And also the third string catcher. Oh, who, that, that, that is. Oh, thank you for reminding me because Grafal yeah. has three catchers on his fucking staff. Right. We were talking about that yesterday when we were eating tacos and right. I'm enjoying this whole game. Yeah. So. He takes out uh, Zebi Zavala, who's the best defensive catcher we have, for the fucking new kid, Rodriguez, or whatever his name is. And then he had a batting and striking out. I'm like, this is why we don't do that. Well, Zebby no, Zavala. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when he's catching. Um, oh, though, yeah, the yeah. Closer, yeah. The, the, the closer yeah, is pitching. Yeah, yeah. So he the ball, it. yeah, the Go ball, ahead, yeah, yeah. So there's a man on second, and there's a wild pitch. And it bounces right in front of him and gets past him, and and the and the backup the backup catcher, whatever his name is, Rodriguez or whatever his name is, doesn't even pay attention that there's a guy in second. There's no outs, and he runs a third. And then he's like, I don't know where the ball's at. And turns around and he's like, Oh, duh. Well, I think he didn't think that there was no one on base. Yeah, because it was the tenth inning. Right, and that he let it go by or like whatever. But then yeah. he was like, Oh no, there's someone, and he went to go grab it. And I pointed that out right away, and yeah. Yeah, well, you know, injuries have been plaguing the White Sox for multiple years, so I don't know if it's a systemic thing because the Bulls have the same kind of problem. I don't know if we need to change from Rush to wherever, to Northwestern or whatever. I'm not dogging it because Rush fixed my uh, my hip. So, uh, <laughs> 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 But Rick Hahn gave Grafo a shitty fucking lineup, a lineup that doesn't really complement itself. I mean, you you gave away a lot of pieces that could have helped, um, but Grafo wasn't the guy. Grafal was not the guy, and you know, unfortunately, they're gonna keep him after they sell and say, "Oh, you work with the young kids again," and back to square one. You could have kept Ricky for this in fucking tire time for this bullshit. It's it's very simple. Like there is no urgency with this fucking organization. Um, Berger being benched early in the season in favor of Gavin Sheets, who wasn't hitting. He can only hit against right-handers. He can't hit against left-handers, so we're not gonna play him. That is a half a player. Why is he on this fucking roster? Yes, I get it. We drafted him high. Yep. But if he's if he can't hit against left-handers, well, send him down state to, to the minors and give him reps against left-handers. It's not hard science. It's really not. And if he can't do it, cut him. It's not fucking hard to do that. J- 
Jake Berg has got what over twenty homers, and and the only reason he's playing is because uh, Moncada's uh, being a little bitch and been hurt. Yeah, I mean he's not conditioned. He actually does have a fucking back, a fucked up back. Um, I talked to Ozzy off air, um, off air, and he said no, Moncada's actually really fucked up in the back. That's see, but. With that news, mm-hmm. that's even scarier. Yes. <laughs> like, and it, now you can't trade Mankata. No, you can't. <laughs> like, you can't at all. Because that's that's the guy everybody was like, okay, you could still probably go ahead and move on Mankata, especially if he has a big year. And now you can't do anything no, with nothing, that player. Nothing. He, 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 it's the Joe Creedy. Yeah. Oh my just pretty God. much, yeah. Well, he's Joe. I love Joe Creedy. Joe well, Creedy he can, did really Joe well. Was, Joe Creedy can fucking hit. Joe Creedy was <laughs> a monster. Yeah, he was a monster for when he was healthy. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, sorry to break that news to you people. I'm talking off here with Ozzy. That he, he yeah, when you were me. cheesing, being so happy. It's called, been, it's called networking, sir. No, I believe you, but you were still cheesing, and I love it. Of course it. I, I was. I love it, I love That's it. That's if you were, you know, at, with the Cubs and talking to... David Ross or talking yeah. to, uh, um, uh, yeah, anyone. Anyway, but uh, Ivan, I, I just got to tell you off here. So we went to the Red Sox, <laughs> White Sox, and that same face that he was making yeah. on that, he went to go to the White Sox store, in the candy store. Of oh, course. I love this hat. Oh, <laughs> I love this thing. And I'm like. I got like over 200 hats, man. And, and so do I. I have a great selection of hats. No, not just White Sox, but Bulls, well, Cubs, Bears. Yeah. You know, I, fuck, I have Toronto Hawks. hats. I have San Diego hats. I, if it's a good hat, I'll wear it. No, nah, I, don't, I don't represent anyone else. So I have I have one Cub hat. Chicago. I have one Cub hat. I used. To I want you to wear it and take a photo if when the Cubs win both games. If the Cubs win both games, I want you to take a photo with that Cubs hat. If they take three out of four. No, I want this. No, of course that could happen. <laughs> I want to sweep. sweep. If they sweep. This, okay. If they, if they sweep, sweep the two. The sweep at guarantee rate. You if have they to sweep wear a the hat. Two at guarantee rate. Okay, and then if the White Sox sweep at Wrigley, then you gotta wear a White Sox hat. Fine. Deal. Deal. That's the cheapest one right now. The deal we yeah, can do. Right yeah, because you can both wear the shit, right? Yeah. I just have to borrow one of your hats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got to get one of your own, sir. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was going to offer you one of mine, but okay. I have a cup hat. I have the uh, I little have bear one. with the little bat. Okay, and Cubs. I have, and if I have you're the, listening and I have right the softball now. jersey as well. That goes along with it. It's a Nike softball jack, uh, uh, jersey. Got it like over 10 years ago. I have that one. I have San Diego. I have the Brewers. I, dude, I'm a baseball fan. I'm a baseball player. I have no I, no ill will against the Cubs organization. I just hate ignorant Cubs fans that don't know the lineup, that I don't know their that. players. I understand and that. And the same thing for those White Sox. Same thing. I'm right. going to say that. It's yeah, the same. same thing. But my thing is, like, I love the Red Sox yeah. just because I helped them win in 04. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. I signed my initials on their field in Fenway Park when I went three times, and they won that World Series that year. <laughs> they've won on my they, they've won on my birthday. They won so many times, um, and I just have a connection with them. But I still root for the Cubs now. When the Red Sox came to Wrigley, I was like, I'm just gonna wear my Cubs stuff, man. <laughs> wow. I, you know? oh, man. I've been to Fenway, and I I bought a Fenway. Like, I, like I mean, yeah. you made you made your choice, right? <laughs> yeah. Choice. No, but I mean, in all seriousness, it's like, yeah, I'll rep those teams, but you know, I, I have I, Red Sox gear. I have a bat hat and shirt. I you mean, could be a baseball person. But I am a baseball person. I'm a Chicagoan yeah. diehard. I have a Sandberg and, jersey too. I just I'm waiting for me to run into him and get it signed, but I right. you know, I don't wear it because it's a right. white jersey and I don't want to mess it up. Right. I, yeah, those white jerseys. Yeah, they they stain really easy. Yeah, they do. Trust me. I gotta wear one I know. on Wednesday. All, all of my white socks jerseys that are white, like they end up like a mustard stain or like the sweat stains. It just that's what the, that's what happens with those. Yeah. Um, speaking of me being a really Chicagoan, the uh-huh. one thing I could actually respect that the White Sox did is they put a shame bell inside the stadium where it says no ketchup, and if you put ketchup on your hot dog, you gotta shame yourself and ring that bell. So I mean, I mean, do they do it just for the adults? Because kids. Put ketchup on everything, so you can't like. Fuck. Then you spank the kid right then and there. <laughs> no, <laughs> the bartender does it. Oh, oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I went to G and Jude's. My parents and myself, we would go to G and Jude's. There was no ketchup there, so no, I neither grew Jimmy's. Up just, no. I yeah. just grew up having mustard. So yeah. if you come here. Ask you should know the rules by now. Just like in New York, I'm not gonna ask for a deep dish. I'm gonna have a thin slice and fold it and eat it up because uh-huh. I eat my pizza like yeah. I'm in New York. Yeah. So, but yeah, I just I thought that was pretty cool. That was a one cool thing. Oh, I uh, guess I'll uh, at, at, I'll check it you, out. I'll, go, I'll video it when uh, the next game I go to. Okay. Yes. Please take a photo by it too. Yeah, I don't put ketchup on my hot dog. I know you don't, but I just want you to take Four a photo. Pork peppers, of it. onions, relish, Everything. mustard. I think something. when we went to the game, we each had two hot dogs. Oh, oh yeah, I had a pole. I, I had never, two poles. I never get. I, the, 
Cubs. I don't know if they have the the onions. I might be wrong. No, no, not. The no, they have the caramelized I, onions. No, 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 the celery salt. No. I might have I might have missed out uh, on it, but like every time I go to the concessions, I'm like. I mean, it's on your shirt. You got you got the salt on there. I, mean, I got it on there. But I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm just missing it. Maybe they got it somewhere else. I'm but. pretty sure they do in select areas, not when they give it to you and you're getting it from the the guy who's handing them out. In the stands. Oh, he has not. to have it on deck. He should have like a little yeah, holster look. of celery salt. <laughs> yeah. Ready and to go. Like all the condiments. Like he, he should have like a, a gun holster, but it should be just condiments inside. Yeah. Like ready to go. Like Warm, this. hot condiments. <laughs> you know, <laughs> with pocket. You don't put mayo on this. So who cares? Yeah, I wouldn't put mayo on a hot dog either. <laughs> um, I know yeah. it jumped off track here. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, well, we made a bet, and we'll see what happens. I'm uh, happy that Ivan approves of this bet because well, the, he's another cup I did. understand it, but it's not just. Oh, man, people, We if that first bet, everyone that's, was laughing. Like that, that's why that I doubled first, down. Like that first bet, that's why I started like. Looking like pretty hard at the nose, I was like, man, he could, he could actually, do, yeah. like, this could actually work for you. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, my, my issue was I was seeing how many people they were dealing out and then getting this manager and then just, you know, yeah. Sox being the Sox and who they are, they're mm-hmm. just as bad as the Mets. Oh, whoa, whoa. You oh, know? Well, check those records. Check, check those records. Out. Anyway, let me finish my point here. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, Jake Berger was struggling at the plate in June. His wife was watching film of him and said, hey, your ass is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus. wait a second, what? He said uh, when he's in his batting stance that his uh, front shoulder would open up first, which means you're not keeping your hips right. Right. So he looked at the film, fixed it, and started hitting home runs right away. Yeah, his like, wife did that. I'm sorry. The White Sox organization should be doing this. No, absolutely. Not his wife. Sign her now. Sign her now. Sign, she <laughs> could look at all their butts. All her, yeah. like, she'll be fine. What she'll is be your position? So happy. She's right. happy with What me. is your position? I'm the ass coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> I make sure their asses are doing what it's supposed to be doing. Right. Now, I need to see full contact. I need you to take your pants off, sir. Yeah, uh, yeah that's yes, I need to see the full motion. <laughs> So, I mean, hey, get that lady a from, job from swing to ripple. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> she's been watching in slow motion. <laughs> you see right here, this is where you fucked up. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, Grafal fucking up with with Berger. Grafal fucking up with Tim Anderson, who hurt his knee, hurt, hurt his shoulder, still in the lineup, still batting lean up, uh, clean uh, lead off for no fucking reason. The dude's been struggling with his baby mama drama. Put him down in the fucking lineup. He's come out of it lately because he's going opposite field now. He's not trying yeah. to get home runs. Finally. But I keep him at number two. Lee Benatendi, uh, Benatendi at number one. He's been doing very well there. Um, Eloy, groin injury. Yeah. Groin in th- th- This kid is... No- put this kid in a bubble. You know, I, I... Like bubble boy. Yeah. Put him in a bubble. This fucking kid is... is is still in the lineup with a, you know, with the groin injury. He should be on a ten day IO. Oh, but we need him in the lineup. Yeah, because they have no one on the bench. No, we do have people on the bench. Uh, give me that fucking kid. Uh, who's the fucking kid that we just got? Um, Remenard. Excuse me, playing second base. Put his ass in the office. Breathe, breathe. He's uh, I, dude, are, like dude. So I, am, I am so over this fucking team getting their I ass quick. Like, I, I, I mean, I get it, and I'm. I, I just don't want you to die. We don't. We just don't want you to die. <laughs> right. We want you to breathe. So like fuck. On there like, woof, woof. I need those two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. But like going back to Eloy, like, bro. Dumb you shit. You know how happy I am. <laughs> Like, hey, we yeah. got, I got Cease I, like, out of it, Cease, though. Like, Cease, Cease, honestly, I thought it was going to be flip-flop. Yeah. I thought Cease was going to be like, eh. Yeah. And then I thought Eloy was going to be like Cease this. was a throw-in. Cease is, a, Cease is good. Cease is a fucking monster. Eloy, on the other hand. Oh, God. Like, bro, it, I don't want to, I, I can't explain it, but he just needs to be a DH. Yeah. Like, that's it. And they already have a ton of DHs on that team. Yeah, yeah him, there's a Grandel, lot of DHs on that team. And, and Sheets. And catchers. Yeah. Mm. And, and then Andrew Vaughn, I don't know what the hell. I'm just reading about this. He's in a walking boot. What the fuck? But they don't put him on the IL. Is there that, like, that's why Grandel was playing first base yesterday. But, and I'm like, why is he playing first base? But that's my point. Like, they're, I feel like they're afraid to ask who's injured and who's not. And they know everyone's injured. Everybody's and, fucking and injured. And they team. won't have a team to put on the field. I think that's the issue that they have right now with the White Sox. Because, come on, ask everyone. Go in the, go in the clubhouse. Ask who's hurt and who's not. And then you're going to see majority of your players who are playing day-to-day are injured. I, mean, I also think that's why they want to leave. I mean, Because they're I th- forced to play. Um, 
from like Northwestern from Mike Rodriguez, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Mike Rodriguez the Portes. He uh, he's you know he's an insider, and he I asked him what's going on with the White Sox, and he said a lot of the players are not happy with the front office, how they're handling things, um, inside the clubhouse, on the field, and everything. This is per Mike Rodriguez, not me speculating. This is someone who's an insider letting me know a month ago this has been going on. <sighs> Another thing that fucking grinds my gears. The Yer- Yermin Mercedes thing. The kid's a fucking monster hitting home runs. And because he didn't do something right, Tony Russo benched him. And then he's been in obscurity. They just told Oscar Colas to cool it down. You're too amped up. The kid's a fucking rookie. You need that energy in that You clubhouse. need the fucking energy in the cool clubhouse. Down. What, what do you mean? What do you mean cool down? He's too amped up at the plate. Well, what do you want to be sluggish and slow? Exactly. I don't understand because there's not a clear philosophy. There's not a clear direction. There's nothing that is fucking linear on what the team is going to do from front office all the way down to the fucking, I don't know, the ball boy. I don't know what's wrong with this organization, but it just needs to be fucking cleaned out. You're tell, like you said, you're telling a rookie who's up there, yeah, he's in. Maybe you tell him, hey, if you're ha- is he doing terrible at the plate? See, like, no. if he's having a terrible time at the plate, yeah, you're going to tell him to slow down. Right. You're not even, he, first of all, you're going to be sending him down. They already sent him down, and he came back up right. after raking. Okay, see, see, there you go. So now, you've got, you're, now you're telling a guy to do what works for him. But also do bare minimum. But don't do what works right. for him. Wait. So, so, yeah, do the bare This do goes the, back to like, the Tony LaRusso, don't run hard to first base. Right. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> that oh, is your what? fucking job, to right. run hard to first base. Exactly, exactly. So it's like, oh, we don't want you getting hurt. Well, what everyone's fucking want? hurt now. I, I, no, I get that. And it, it is frustrating, but it's like, think of it this way. Like the Miami, everyone talks about Miami culture, right? For the uh, Miami Heat. Mm-hmm. Well, there's no culture. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's different. I guess Posters was a fucking tape director. Well, I'm not or, talking about that, but I'm just hearing he, this, this positive yes. energy of going into a clubhouse and being welcomed and warmed. Well, and, that's what I'm saying. He's been there energy. since the, he was there from the ground up. And he moved in all the way from the bottom, being a, a tape guy, a, a video guy. Now to being the head coach, he built that culture. Right. I understand that, and, but I'm just and, saying and that there's no built culture. No. At, at, either you're know. with this culture or you're not. Right. And, and, and that's it's what, the White that, Sox way and not and the players. And that's why way. I wanted right. Bruce Bochy, because he would establish that. Ozzy Ginn, same thing, would establish that. He's a fucking hard ass. This is how you're going to fucking play. If you're not, get the fuck out. Carlos Lee, hey, you're not part of this fucking team. I don't like the way you're fucking playing. You may hit it all the homers you want. Give me Scott Pesendek. And they won the World Series once they made that trade. It really just... Right. Building a culture and putting the right pieces in the right sec- sections. You don't have that with Grafal. Now, can I honestly say, when the season's over for all of baseball, do you think free agents want to go to... No. Be a White Sox? Our biggest fucking signing was Andrew Benetton for $75 million. We won't pay pitchers. We've never paid pitchers. That's why uh, um, G. Lito's leaving. That's why he's going to get traded. Because he's gonna priced out they're not gonna pay him they they're trying to do this like like rotational thing like the cardinals did it for a while yeah successfully i don't know how yeah it's not working lately but they're trying to do that same thing but it just doesn't work when you're not recognized like it, they have a development problem with the Sox too mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like they can have good players but it it doesn't seem like these players are are able to stick in the major leagues like Lou Bob having a phenomenal year. Yeah. Eloy, Yawan's had his struggles. Mm-hmm. You had your struggles with Giolito. Those are three guys that are, are supposed to be major contributors on your team right now. Giolito was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on more muscle. Yeah. What's that gonna do for you? Dude, no, it's like, a, it's like a boxer. You can't be a bodybuilder because you can't move. It's fucking just logical. And I'm like, why do you put on 30 pounds of muscle? Then you struggled. Now right. he went back down. <laughs> Stay away. He's about, he, he's, he wants to be what Michael Lorenzen was uh, for the Dodgers. Yeah, yoke and stuff. Right. Like it's you already you're just gonna make yourself stiffer and, and a bad thrower. You know what I mean? And you're you like, can cramp up easier. It, it yeah. just makes no sense. Yeah. But I, to your point, it's exactly that. There's been no, not much developmental for a very long time with long the White time. Sox. As simple as that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. We'll come back. We'll run down our top five. Crosstown moments. I'll get your tissues. <laughs> this is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. 
Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. <laughs> Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out GritClothingCo.com and use the promo code TrueFan15. TrueFan15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15 percent off of your entire order. Hey, this is comedian Ken Gar, and I was just a guest on the True Chicago Sports Fans Podcast with E-Rock. Big Earl E-Rock. and G Money and a bunch of weirdos so <laughs> tune in <laughs> welcome back to the true chicago sports fan podcast today we have a special segment for all the baseball fans out there we're going to be discussing the top five moments of legendary crosstown series between the cubs and the white Sox. let's get started number five number five i remember number five do you i you, do of course it's been played over and over and played out so everybody knows this it is uh, 2006, the year after the White Sox win the World Series, a oh. tightly contested game between the White Sox. A.J. Persinski collided with Cubs catcher Michael Barrett at home plate. The incident sparked a heated brawl between the teams, igniting a passionate rivalry between the teams all over again. Now, he's coming in from third. Barrett's blocking the plate, as he now, should, as right, he should, because right. he was allowed to do that at that point. At that time, yes. A.J. gave him a shoulder, shoulder block, took him down. He t- and then he slapped the plate. When he got up, he bumped him again because he was going to, trying to get his helmet. Barrett took exception to the extra bump and punched him. I, I don't see a problem with either side. I don't have an issue with anything that happened. It's baseball. I That that was baseball back yeah, then. Back then. Yeah. I love that. Was, that. That was, yeah, you were going to get a fight. You were going to get. And AJ knew what he did. AJ's an agitator. AJ, AJ's an agitator, and it didn't matter if AJ, or it didn't matter if uh, Michael Barrett was a catcher as well. AJ was going to do it, and the slapping of the plate is what I think the slapping. Was it the slap? I think, I think it, was it was a slap more than it was a takeout. I think Michael Barrett could have been like, could have took taken a takeout, but like doing the slap. He slapped, and then he got and up, and he got bumped up. him trying to get the yeah, helmet. I think that was the issue. It's like you th- that extra stuff kind of set Michael right. Barrett off. I, I think he would have been down. I mean, not obviously he wasn't happy with being ran through. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know I mean? But I think he would have accepted that as that's baseball. And we move on, but AJ. That's played, played every yeah. series, every every crosstown right. series. That that video is played, and it just gets everybody riled up. It does. It makes me want to go crazy, <laughs> and put ketchup on every White Sox's white jerseys. I'm just oh kidding. I my do that. god! I wouldn't do that. Ketchup is the devil. <laughs> you know who also? Uh, a little, uh, just a side note. Go ahead. Um, and we're gonna talk about fights real quick. When Jose Batista. Didn't get one of those hits when he got into a fight or oh the bat swing. Oh, my God. For the bat flip. I was just like, oh, my God, dude, don't ruin our last name. Please, for the love of God, <laughs> don't just get it licking. Just one. Don't go down like. like hey, uh, some, some of these guys think they can fight, and they just can't. They just can't. We can, but he just didn't provide <laughs> it, what I was looking for. And when the Cubs, when he was a free agent, I wanted the Cubs to sign him because yeah. I have I, I I don't grow an attachment. I grow an attachment to the players, but I don't get uh, actual jerseys. I get my own name on there. Mm-hmm. But it would have been cool to have Batista on a jersey. Yeah. I'm just saying, and I would have loved that. But uh, yeah, so God, <laughs> I still think about it at night. Go ahead, go. What's number four? Number four, June 30th, 2006. Only a month after the infamous AJ Barrett brawl. The White Sox are back on Cubs turf with another crosstown encounter. Down six to five, two guys on base. AJ Przinsky belted a go ahead three run homer, launching the White Sox to their 13th victory in 15 games. You talk about payback, like having been amped up and wanted to put the nail in the coffin. Right. I mean, that's what you do, right? Someone hits you, a pitcher hits you, you get up there. I'm gonna fucking home run, home run off you. I mean, that's what happens. Right. I mean, that's that should be in the mentality of every baseball player. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Like with the Braves and Mets rivalry. You know what I mean? Things like that. But yeah. Sorry. 
No, no comments on that one. <laughs> no, 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 not on that game. I mean, it still hurts. <laughs> we but, don't yeah. like that one. Mm-mm. All right, number three. Uh, moment six is twenty oh eight when the White Sox and Carlos Quinton and the Cubs. Ryan Dempster had an intense battle during an interleague big game. Quinton was hit by a pitch, and tensions quickly escalated. Both benches clear, resulting in a memorable, memorable on-field altercation between the players. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter who is on what team. They understand that there's a rivalry between. North and South. I feel like recently it's gotten a little soft. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, and, and I'm all for it, but that's why when it comes to being soft, it's like I don't really care. Because in the Sounds long, like a personal problem. Long, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, maybe. But in the long run, who has a better record and who's actually winning? And who actually has a better uh, franchise? Uh, I'd rather be hard than soft. Well, <laughs> it seems like that whole franchise is soft the whole time. <laughs> Brought to you by Blue Chew. If you have the chew, we have the motivation. Hey, if they want to sponsor the podcast, I am all for that. We're taking them right now. Uh, no. uh, go ahead. Go at number three. Uh, that was number three. Oh, was it? Number two. A historic moment in 2001 in a game that went to extra innings. Cubs Sammy Sosa hit his 500 home run that a boy. against the White Sox. We still lost. Yeah, yeah. Sosa joined the elite group of players, becoming the only 18th player in MLB history to achieve this milestone. That It was a moonshot. I remember that. That was a moonshot. How old were you? Shut up. I want to know. 2001? Shit. Uh, were you a little boy and like, oh my God. No, I'd been, what, 20, 2021? 20, oh, oh, never mind. Yeah. Oh, you weren't a boy. You were a young man. I was a young man. <laughs> <laughs> I got my first pube. <laughs> no, nah, man. And yeah, I've always been a Sammy Sosa fan. Yeah, he was great. He was with the White Sox first. He was a Ranger, White Sox, and uh, and Cub. Cub, and then an Oreo. Mm-hmm. Nothing on that one, Ivan? No Sammy Sosa memories? I mean, I love Sammy Sosa. Like, I'm not. Are I'm you, not are you still uh, before I still or after? after? Uh, after the skin transition? Or That's after, what I meant. Uh, I, I don't recognize this Sammy Sosa. I don't. No one recognizes him. <laughs> I, I don't know who that man he is. He looks like Walter like, Mercado and the shit. Sammy, the Sammy Sosa that I know. <laughs> the Sammy Sosa that I know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, of course. Dude, I don't care about... Like, I mean, I do care about the steroids. I, like, I'm glad the game is clean. But... The game needed it. That was yeah, something that changed yeah. everything about baseball. I, like... It was exciting. Everybody was excited, and it, it made it, it wasn't just like Chicago and St. Louis with the home run. It was change. with San Francisco. It, it was, yeah, I mean, you had everybody yeah. around the around the country. Then Barry Bonds got in. You had like some of the greatest players of our generation: Roger Clemens, you know, Andy yeah. Pennett, Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey Jr. You, know, Jr. Yeah. you had some of the greatest guys, and they're all what they were doing were hitting mammoth moonshots. <laughs> oh so God! Every time, like I seen Sammy Sosa, like it, it was as a kid, it was something you. You were ready for, you were amped up for, you were cheering for Sammy. You want to see him hit the ball onto, you know, onto the street. A wave in the grace. You, know, yep. right. you just wanted to see Sammy do and well. I, so, you know what? I think it was the era, and I don't hold anything about that of them doing steroids at the time because it also helped save baseball. It did. That's how I look at it. Got to the strike. It wasn't right. a problem until somebody made it an issue. Right, because they didn't get the roids, and it wasn't working for them. <laughs> you know, you still have to have the baseball ability. To hit a home run. Right. It's not like I could just take roids the, right now and then the, tomorrow I'm going to be hitting home runs. No, no, not but at all. But, exactly. but it will change uh, a warning track fly out and turn oh, it yeah. into a ball that goes five, six rows up in yeah. the stands. Mm-hmm. It could do that. Yeah. 100%. It and can. my body will have tons of pimples. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back pimples. Right. And my Small manhood. Nuts. Small nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I think Barry was like, had a high pitch. Wow. <laughs> you know? Hi, my favorite butt. Uh, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know. But um, I feel like all these highlights are all White Sox shitting on the Cubs. And it's, uh, and it's Sammy it, Sosa just, and Michael Bear. I gave you two. It's two and two. Oh, okay. Well, the yeah. Cubs lost both games. Right. They lost, but I'm, they're just highlights. We don't want highlights. We want highlights and wins. Okay. Well, you does a this, win? You guys won many games. We won many games. I think it's a, okay, the series. Well, many that aren't on this list. <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting shitted on by you. We're getting shitted on, and we're not. We're enjoying the it's highlights. Almost, it's almost like a backhanded. Like it's, it's like yeah, a backhanded. It's a compliment. compliment. Well, next time you can guys can write this fucking list. I stayed up all day writing this shit. You stayed up all day. You should be up all day. Yeah, I usually it's nap. During, I usually nap during the day. 
<laughs> so do I. <laughs> What's number one? Uh, finally, number one brings us 2008 when the first time the Cubs and Sox met as a first place team since interleague playing in 1997. Two teams, two first place teams met uh, met for a very tight ball game throughout the White Sox, holding the one relief going into the bottom of the ninth inning. Ramirez stepped in to face the White Sox reliever Scott Le- uh, Limbrick uh, and the runner on first. One old count, Aram Rent. Aram already went yard in the seventh and decided to send every Cubs home happy in the bottom of the ninth. So okay. there's your other one. Aramis oh, Ramirez. Aramis Ramirez, yes. I miss him. He was a good player. See, it, see it's three to two. Okay. Finally. Right. Okay, okay. I'm happy. Okay. Three to yeah. two. Three yeah, two. Yeah. You're good. See. Yeah. All, All right. right, well, that's good. I see. mean, finally, we could end on a good note for being number one. I figured <laughs> I would do it that way because we do have two Cub fans on the podcast today. Thank you. Yeah. Ivan, I'm so glad you're a Cubs fan. That, that <laughs> makes me happy. <laughs> All right, there you, there you have it, folks. The top five moments of Chicago Cubs versus White Sox crossed on series from intense brawls to historic milestones. This rivalry provides us with unforgettable moments throughout the years. What's your favorite move it, moment of this iconic matchup? Let us know. Hit us up on the DMs. Slide in our DMs. We like it. Yeah, slide into the DMs. Lube Lord it up. Lube bit. it up first, though. Uh, make I don't sure. Need lube. I'm ready to go. I bet you are, because you're always soft. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. It still works. We'll be right back <laughs> with Stirring a Pot after a word from our sponsors. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15. TRUEFAN15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15 percent off of your entire order. Hey, what's up? This is Lex Cruz from Jungle AE Recording Studios and Illinois Media School. And you are now listening to True Chicago Sports Fans Podcast. Welcome back to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with Big Z. Um, we got uh, Stevie B and Ivan Vargas. What's up, fellas? We're still, we're still, we're still alive. We're still, we're still here. here. We're still soft. <laughs> we're still soft here. Thank God nobody's hurt. Yeah. Thank God nobody's hurt. <laughs> I, I would hope not, but you know. Look at you. Whatever excites whatever you, brothers. Whatever gets you going. <laughs> it's that time again, fellas. Oh, we're stirring the pot time. Yeah, it's time for stirring the pot. <laughs> That's right. Well, we have another call that came in through the No Water in a Weekend podcast um, hotline. And Sean just walked in right now. Yeah, because we're I'm doing we're doing a marathon right now. We are doing a marathon of two shows. So, uh, but uh, you know what? Let's listen to this call. Let's see if we can. Uh, yeah, get, we got it going. Here we go. I actually, um, I was able to listen uh, last night before I sweet begin stuff okay. for today. But uh, yeah, let's check that out. Okay, so let's let's bring up this call here from. Hey, thanks hotline. for calling Noah we the Weekend Hotline. Uh, be sure to leave a message and uh, take a shot, and we'll call you back. Uh, hey guys, this message is for uh, Jose again. This dude. Um, I just wanted yeah. to say, ha ha ha, very fucking funny that you can play my uh, last <laughs> message on your show, <laughs> but you don't have the balls to call me back. It wow, me, you know what I'm saying? So here's the deal. Uh, I uh, I gotta get him out of here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just I. I, I can't do this anymore. Okay, he's uh, he's chained up in my basement, but he's he's made fucking pinball machines out of everything in my fucking house at this point. Okay, uh, so I'm going here's the one time off. Okay, one time off, 150 bucks. Fucking forget it. Let's drop that shit down to I don't know, uh, seventy five dollars. Just seventy. Just you know, wow. fucking call me, man. I, my, my my number. I, just please, 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 please call me. Are you gonna call him or what? <laughs> Um, I don't have a job right now to spend an extra seventy five dollars, so I'm probably not going to well, call it him. It was one fifty, and it went down to seventy five. So. Um, yeah, that's still a lot of money for right me. And plus, if I win this bet, you know, yeah, I'm going to be down a lot of money. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to have to pay you first. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yes, I'm first. <laughs> Oh man! Usually we do a food segment for stirring the pot, but this this phone call it's 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 ongoing, and this guy keeps bothering me about Iraq. I don't know, I don't know. What do you mean bothering you? He keeps calling the hotline. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and it's also funny because the fact that every time I call uh, Z on Fridays, yeah. He sometimes doesn't answer. Oh my God! Relax. That was that one time I was at the Sox game, man. Two times, but I'm not counting. You know. I called you back the other time. You didn't answer. I was busy in the bathroom. I'm oh, yeah, blue. All right, blue chew. Blue chew. <laughs> Whatever you need to get you started. <laughs> They'll always be happy. Oh man, Ivan! It's been great to have you on. It's been nothing but laughs and a lot of shit talking. Oh, but uh, <laughs> we look forward to having you over and over on again. Uh, please let us listeners what you're up to and all your socials. Yeah, man. Like I said, you can find me at uh, Ivan V underscore TTNL on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it nowadays. Yeah. Um, you can also just catch me on the network at the Tape Never Lies on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, like and subscribe. Check us out. Beautiful. Here's, uh, I'm gonna have to now. Hey, yeah, got to do it, dude. Bear season's right around the corner, so we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be starting up, and it's gonna get pretty. Uh, when do you uh, pretty quick. you go right after the Bears game? We go right up. So we will have Wednesday nights. We have uh, keeping it one hundred. Mm -hmm. Wednesday nights seven thirty. Uh, Sunday, right after the Bears game, we're gonna have what's well, right after the Bears game. But we also have for our patrons, we have a uh, halftime beautiful breakdown. So if you want to become a patron, catch the halftime quick turnaround. But if it's you live. want to just catch out, you know, catch the free content. Right after the Bears game, Bears Hour Live, after every Bears game, we go ahead and we break it down, talk about what we saw, talk the good, the bad, the ugly, or if it's positive, we'll talk positively. Yeah. But you, positive know how vibes. Goes, you know how it goes with the Bears sometimes. Sometimes yeah. you got to go ahead and let some frustration out. Do you yeah. have snacks there? Snacks where? Uh, when you're, you know, <laughs> at the show. Oh, yeah. I mean, I bring snacks to my computer all the time. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Because I was like, well, uh, E-Rock is tied up right now. So when we go over there to do with his show, there was snacks. So if me and Big Z go over there, I'm just asking if there's snacks. That's, that's all oh, I'm asking I mean, for. I, if, yeah, if we do a live yeah. show, if you want to have us, want or if you just want to have Z. Or do you uh, like pita uh, chips? I'll eat anything that's free, man. <laughs> so Blue Chew, apparently. <laughs> if that's free, too, I'll definitely take you up on those. <laughs> on all stiff and shit <laughs> uh no but all jokes aside i actually have a uh actual container of a box and a jar or actually a jar tons of blue chew i'll give you some before you leave awesome awesome that, that's your uh to go bag you know yeah. like, yeah. no goodie bag yeah, i'm a lord yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drink some drink and drive and uh take the, take the blue chew <laughs> look ma no hands <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly oh god all right, y'all, that is it for today. Thank you for listening. A big thank you to our sponsor, 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Great Clothing Company. Don't forget to go to greatclothingco.com and get your official TCSF podcast t-shirt. Search for keyword True Chicago and use our promo code TRUEFAN15 at the checkout for 15% off your entire order. That is TRUEFAN15. Get your shirts now. Uh, check out the rest of the 606 Media lineup. You've heard it here first. The newest show on the 606 Media lineup is the No Water in a Weekend podcast with Steven and Sean, a pop culture forward podcast that dabbles in funny trivia to film television music and chicago centric news and happenings new episodes available every monday so now that this episode is almost over you can listen to their episode yeah it's live yeah it is shout out to ronash panic serious beats and custom made for the beats we played on today's show check out panic on the .com for your moment merch and gear Check us out on social media. You can find us at True Shy Fans on Twitter and on TikTok. You can find us on the Facebook, IG, and Spotify. And reach out to us on our email. We want to hear from you. Reach us at TrueChicagoSportsFans at gmail.com. All right, y'all. For Stevie B, Ivan Vargas, this is Big Z. We'll see you next time for episode 154. God damn, 154. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Since we're, 148. We're, we're stacking them up. <laughs> Until then, we'll be good to each other for the love of sports. And go Cubs, go. A few moments later. You have a lot of incest. That's real. Shut your mouth. Lover boy. Nature versus nurture, Lodge. Nature always wins. I think he's on steroids. Hasta luego, amigos. Show's over, show's over, show's over. <laughs>